good morning everyone uh, i hope you all are all are doing well and i'm rahul so i'm the today's host for the misfits event pitch event so before going forward i would like to brief about the misfits so in the high paced and challenging world of entrepreneurship we realized that the building a community is essential to keep up the momentum of startups especially the social impactful startups thus we are building a community platform to engage all the stakeholders change makers and entrepreneurs for collectively benefiting the ecosystem thus in december 2020 thus in december 2020 we launched misfits in a uh, misfits initiative the community arm of brooks ecosystem foundation a non profit social enterprise built by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs we identify leaders who stand to achieve greater social impact with mentorship leadership coaching and access to capital misfits is focused on providing a stage for social impact change makers be it startups non profits or innovators who are building solutions in tech or non tech that can improve the quality of life in their respective regions misfits aims to become a global platform for social entrepreneur entrepreneurship starting with south asia so talking about the 2021 impact here is the re uh, recap for the uh, 2021 misfits uh, 2021 misfits we covered uh, 20 regions of south asia identifying top 30 misfits and uh, partnering with uh, 300 plus stakeholders of entrepreneurship ecosystem we collectively reached 300k plus uh, through our social media uh thank you that's from my side uh, i would like to request uh, sneha das uh, to please uh, uh, proceed for the uh, introducing the partners yeah sneha uh, hello I am so sorry about that. I feel like I'm having some uh, connection issues with my laptop. So, uh, is it okay if I just begin yeah. with like phone? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we would like to, uh, you know, introduce our partners. As a co-host, we have Global Shaper Nafos as a uh, partner, and we have Impact Pod. We have. Uh, UN UNLTD India Maxworth Lemon Ideas and co-working space Kokarma. Uh, Global Shippers Nagpur is actually uh, is like uh, the Nagpur hub is full of young enthusiasts committed to you know shaping our community, shaping the uh, economic, sociology, design, law, technology in that area. Uh, Impact Pod is uh, an initiative by IIT Bombay and IIM Calcutta. alumni to support organizing the social impact space through consulting service through a collaboration network of uh, device and experienced professional across the industry and uh, lemon ideas is also uh, helping uh, the social impact sector uh, through their mentoring program and through their venture startups and incubation support and uh, yeah as well as co-working co-karma co is like Uh, providing startups their co-working co space and Maxworth is helping uh, the startups in the digital field and yeah that's it about my side we have global partners can you share the slide for global partners yes so we have a uh, global partners with us we can see in that slide yeah rahul no problem okay so brooks uh, misfits is initiated by brooks so i would like to uh, you know say something about brooks what we do here uh we realized uh, the need brooks realized the need to uh, foster innovation ecosystem to uh, democratize knowledge sharing local problems need local solution however support for entrepreneurs in emerging economics is distinguished and they lack the skill to build effective solution 
so in brooks uh, we kind of believe uh, that how we can make the change and how we can make the idea happen so it's like our um, motive is it's not about ideas it's about making ideas happen and we believe that uh, mantra thank you from my side i would like to hand over to apoor to introduce to our jury Hello, am I audible? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sneha. Uh, hello, everyone. Myself, Apul. Uh, I would like to introduce the members of the jury. Uh, first, we have Ali bin Masood. He has an ex extensive experience and expertise in the fields of tourism, hospitality, and technology. He is the CEO of Go Rooms from the past eleven months. He has also been a program manager in the DEMO. and was a sales and marketing head in asia pacific travels and tourism great to have you ali next thank you very much guys you for the moment thank you very much next we have rama shirwa shirwalkar who is currently a program head at al sisat impact she has also worked as a senior associate in earth analytics india limited which is incubated in iit kanpur Rama has completed her master's degree in rural technology and development from IIT Guwahati. Thank you. You can join. Thank you for joining us, Rama. Hi, all. Next, next we have Amitabh Vyas, who is currently a national scouting lead and incubator Unlimited India from the past five years. He has also been a deputy director in the Confederation of Indian Industry. and a csr manager at marico innovation foundation in the past hello mita glad to have you thank you hi everyone next lastly we have shamdani tabris who is the ceo of rapido delivery from the past 7 years he is also an alumnus of the us department of state shamdani is also a treasurer of the young professionals forum which is chart which is a chartered institute of logistics and transport great to have you on, on board shamil hello thank you good morning everyone please change the slide uh next i will brief you all about the rules uh each team will get 3 minutes to pitch followed by 5 minutes of question and answers our coordinator will warn the team when 30 seconds is left for 3 minutes to complete i'll warn you about that each team member must change their name startup name and their own name example rahul from vruksh ecosystem foundation is a is present in the meeting as vruksh eco rahul or rahul um, ves just change your name uh, in that format each team can share their screen during their uh, allocated pitching slot you may ask our team member vruksh eco rahul to you can ask rahul to change the share the screen if you face any trouble the winner will be declared in the next week on our social media page next that's it from my side i would now request rahul to take over now the pitching session will start yeah uh, thank you uh, uh, thank you apur and uh, so without uh, uh, wasting any time so we will begin our uh, pitch event so before that uh, i would like to request our jury members to please share their experience uh, i would like to uh, request uh, ali masood to please uh, give a brief about your experience thank you very much rahul um uh, i you know uh, it's been honor um, to you know to be in front of you uh, in front of the young crowd young uh, innovators and enablers who want to really make an impact and change things as they are um i too started off uh, you know with the problem uh, that we have here and that is uh, the hoteling and the affordable hotel sector it's uh, it's so large but yet uh, not many people think about the affordable hospitality 
and the standardization in hospitality. We have seen uh, some really good international and some Indian startups as well make their name to the global stage. One of them also known as Oyo as a from. But right now, um, we still have so much space, so much gap in the, uh, in the ecosystem of hospitality and tech that uh, even if we integrate 50% uh, of the global hospitality, we will still have much more room available. So Go Home is a small uh, effort to you know, actually make an impact in sustainable tourism. What we do is we don't really build hotels and we partnership with existing hotels. Uh, we really scale them up, improve their customer experience, uh, you know, user experience. Um, we improve the lighting, the architecture. We really train the staff to perform well, to greet the customers well. And we integrate all of that with the help of technology. We, you know, uh, we add so many checks through technology that everything is linked with it. And that's really how we generate the customers as well and also make sure the quality is also there. So this is a brief about Goho. Previously, I have uh, spent a chunk of time in Dubai as well uh, in the tourism and hospitality space. That's a more mature market compared to you know, South Asia in terms of hospitality and the standardization. Uh, I have worked uh, on multiple projects with now known as Meta, previously known as Facebook, in uh, developing and you know, training the young entrepreneurs and small uh, business owners. So that's uh, you know, a little bit from my side. One thing I would really like to recommend to all startups is uh, you know, always be go-getters. Always be go-getters. It's the execution that matters, not the idea. So if you really have a you know somewhat idea and you you know you have an excellent execution skills, that's uh, that's the go that's the way to go about it. And you will always learn more when you are in you know doing things practically. That's it from my side. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, Ali bin Masood. Uh, thank you so much for your kind words and uh, your experience. And uh, now I would like to request. Uh, Ms. Rama, to please uh, go for the uh, like, uh, please, uh, please brief about your experience and uh, what would you like to tell our new entrepreneurs right now available? Thank you so much, Rahul. Uh, it's very nice to be here on a Saturday morning and see people, you know, really uh, strive and try to make an impact in in whatever space they believe to be, uh, you know, room for an impact. Um, I have been, I mean, I started off as an architect. I was practicing in vernacular um, architecture with uh, tribals in Palghar. That's how my journey for uh, rural entrepreneur, uh, rural uh, technology began. That's when I decided to pursue my master's in rural tech. Um, uh, later, I joined, a, I joined a startup at a very early stage. So I was the first employee, to be precise, in the startup. And um, I have been on the other side as well pitching and trying to, you know, convince uh, jury members and investors to sort of, uh, you know, put in the put in their money, put in a stake, put in a strategic involvement in the startup. So I understand where all of, all of you are coming from at this point. Uh, believe me, uh, it's not easy. And uh, it's not easy to convince somebody the impact that you're trying to make. But uh, congratulations on, you know, being here and, uh, you know, just putting it out there, putting it out there. I think that's that's very important. Um, apart from that, I would say now now my work with LCSR is more about nurturing impact startups. So anything that has a social impact, environmental impact, um, that's the kind of space that I work with right, uh, right now. And my focus area, although is northeast, um, I I always am very keen on you know seeing startups that can uh, make a change. So the the space that I precisely work in is how do you measure your impact. Um, you know, so if if at all you say that okay, this is my idea, but then how do you measure it in terms of say societal issues, in terms of uh, the reach that you have to the people or your audience? Um, you know, that kind of space is what I I work in. I've also started investing very recently, so I'm also an angel investor in one of the one of our portfolio startups in Northeast. Um, so that's where I'm I am, and 
thanks again for having me and all the best to everybody i i am sure you're going to have fun pitching i mean just have fun pitching don't don't take too much tension you know just put out that word that this is what we are doing and be confident about it so all the best thank you so much thank you so much rama uh now i'd like to request from mr amitabh das to please go for for the uh like uh, to please uh, encourage our uh, entrepreneurs new entrepreneurs hi thank thanks rahul thanks everyone uh i'd like to thank uh, vriksh and uh, uh, misfits for inviting me for this event uh, it's a long partnership with abhijit and vriksh and i've seen uh, in fact i've seen all the all the versions of misfits since the day it, it was launched so good to be here again uh my journey started uh, approximately 18 years back uh started work with an industry body called cii uh, competition with indian industry worked in multiple verticals uh, and uh, one day i decided ki uh, this something needs to be done for social sector so i jo- joined a social vertical in limited in in competition with indian industry uh work on a international project of hiv aids and there my journey begins then i jumped to marico uh, for doing some csr so uh, was leading their education initiative uh, 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 uh getting partners on board getting formulation of the csr strategy uh, fund uh, giving out funds all those things actually and then i came to my current organization unlimited india uh where i really enjoyed working with early stage social entrepreneurs where what we do is uh, we look for early stage social entrepreneurs who are trying to solve the pressing social problems uh, they they could be a ngo model they could be a social enterprise model a for profit model and in the early stages so there we we uh, take them on board through a structure selection process and uh, form cohorts for a period of 9 months uh, give them uh, hands on one on one coaching little amount of funds experts connect build their entire model how to see how they can scale up it's all those tools and everything actually so i'm i'm responsible for uh, getting those people on board uh, uh, to as scouting says okay i have to scout or hunt for those people uh, across uh, the geographies within india and i also been an incubation coach for last 3 uh, 4 years so has been working with 16 17 uh, 16 of them at least social entrepreneurs uh so really enjoying the journey with them really get motivated by the uh by their zeal to succeed their zeal to solve that problem actually so i have a great respect for this uh, uh for these entrepreneurs so uh yeah just trying to do my contribution to this social impact world uh that's about me thank you uh, thank you thank you so much mr abhitav das uh now i would like to request mr shantani to please uh give your valuable words to our new entrepreneurs uh, good morning everyone i'm chamdani um i'm uh, the ceo of rapido limited so today it's a very special day it's a holiday but april everyone's here and i'm really excited that all the young entrepreneurs are here to pitch their ideas takes me back to to the year 2015 when i started my journey as an entrepreneur when i was lost myself well much like a doctor or an engineer an entrepreneur has a very explored exploration mind so that person is a wanderlust and i believe that they try to solve complex problems with the innovation and today i'm really looking forward to listen to all these interesting ideas so let me give you an idea about our company what we do is we try to solve complex logistical problems for the e-commerce industry of bangladesh much like what india has like ecom express and there are plenty of successful uh, logistics company in india and pakistan subcontinent and bangladesh is doing great in terms of using technology and trying to solve complex logistics problem i also happen to be a consultant at cd which is an incubation center at center for entrepreneurship development where much like mr amitabh said we try to help uh, growth stage entrepreneurs to nurture their businesses and provide them with a facility where like minded people come to discuss their ideas we provide them with funds so that they can accelerate their growth uh, having said that i'm really excited to listen to all the young minds out here and having a great fun just just speak your mind we are all like minded people here 
Um, just don't be nervous, be proactive, and just get on your toes. Let's get going. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, uh, I would like to request a jury. Uh, like, uh, can you please access the scorecards which we have shared to you? Uh, not really, Rahul, because, uh, so I'm sorry, but we are a little backward. We, we don't work on OneDrive. So I don't have any access to OneDrive. It can be shared on a Google Drive or something that can be accessible. Yeah, I can access it, but I it, it doesn't work online. So I have to download it. Okay. Um, uh, Rahul? Uh, it's yeah. working fine for me. I mean, I'm also able to edit it. Um, so I don't seem to have an issue with it, but uh, yeah, preferably I think Google Drive would be better. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Sneha, can you please share uh, share the file as per the like? Uh, I, I request uh, that jury members uh, who are not able to edit the online now, just uh, edit at uh, offline mode. Okay. So and just uh, share this uh, share the file on uh, mail to us, if it is okay. Perfect. Yeah, Rahul, Hello. for Sorry. that I need to actually download the file. Uh, but I do I can't access the uh, OneDrive at all actually. Oh, so it sure. is not downloadable at all. So sure. I request it Neha to Sneha to at least mail me or do something. He's doing it. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, uh, all the jury members. Uh, I think we should proceed for the pitches. So, firstly, we are having Social Shape Foundation. Uh, let me just open the page deck of them. Hello. Uh, yes, Prachi. Yeah. Is it okay if I share my own screen? Yes, that would be okay. better. Okay, great. Thanks. One second. Just let me know when you start seeing my slides. Yeah. yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Great. Um, let me know when I can start. Yes, Prati, you can start now. Great. Thanks. Um, thanks, Rahul and Ms. Fitz. Uh, thank you for having me. Good morning, everyone. I'm Prachi, and I'm the co-founder of Social Shapes Foundation. Um, you know, I've been practicing this pitch um, for some time now, and just now listening to all, everybody, all four people here, I realized that this might be one of the easiest ones that I have had to do, because all of us, in fact, the other participants as well, all of us here have struggled really hard to, uh, to be doing something that makes us happy. And it's kind of, you know, what uh, we are doing or trying to do at Social Shapes Foundation also. We are helping um, young people in rural India achieve a fulfilling future. And basically, I mean, before I start, I just like, so all of us and, and young people everywhere have some dreams or aspirations in, in some shape or form, right? So I'll just uh, introduce a few people to you. Anjoria, Juganta, Meera, these are, people living in, uh, these are young kids living in tribal rural areas. Um, they come from very small villages. They, they go to schools nearby and they have big dreams. Anjoria wants to be an IS officer. Juganta wants to be an electrical engineer and Mira wants to be a teacher. But unfortunately, given their context, instead of moving ahead, every passing day, they move further away from achieving their dream. And it's all because they don't have anybody to speak to. You know, if, if all of us kind of go back and think about things that have helped us achieve our small and big victories, 
those are the things that are absent from their lives and which makes it extremely difficult for them to cross the barriers uh, in the pathway of a productive future. Things like the right amount of exposure for things that they can do and they can be in the future, lack of credible sources of information, uh, timely information, um, lack of mentors, people that can guide them, that can tell them what they can do and how they can go about their journey. And we spent a lot of time, our, our, our team of co-founders have spent a lot of time um, in rural villages. And we, we kind of uh, realized that this is kind of what was happening. And, and like Ali said, we just jumped in, right? We, we went in with this idea and we said, okay, we want to do something Rajiv, about Rajiv, Rajiv. this lack of guidance. And yeah, so we brought um, in Vikal. It's kind of a mentorship program that goes to um, villages at their uh, doorstep and gathers young people uh, according to their age and, and cognitive levels and guides them in the journey that they want to take. So for the past couple of years, we've been working in Orissa and we are now present in three districts um, and working with about 3,500 households. Um, we are know. essentially doing... Um, okay, so I think... Uh, yeah, I'll just close here um, just with a few pictures. Thank you. I'll take any questions. If everyone allows, I have a question first. Um, I want to um, know, Prachi, what is your biggest and foremost challenging challenge in developing this? Um, actually, the foremost challenge in developing this would be um, making it relevant and iterative for each and every single person, because mentorship is not something that you can present an, as an umbrella solution for everyone. So when you're providing guidance, it needs to be specific and individualized to the person that is, that is in front of you. So that has been one of the biggest challenges because we, we have developed a curriculum, we have developed a program, but when we bring it to the kids, each one of them have different questions, each one of them have come from different challenges. And, and so to be able to customize that or to bring a program which, uh, which makes them feel that it is meant for me, that I am identified as an individual and it's guiding me personally in my journey, that has been one of the biggest uh, challenges uh, in developing this model. And so far, what is your approach towards this problem? So how, what we, how are you trying to combat this challenge? Right. So, so what we did was we kind of learned from the self-help group model that has worked really well in, in, in villages. And we've created these learning groups, which means that in a very micro environment of a village, we, we bring together kids that come that, that are from the similar uh, age and social background. And they meet regularly to interact with, with their mentors. Now, the mentors are also people that come from similar backgrounds from the same local geography. So that way we bring context, language, uh, understanding, everything in, in that one uh, forum. And then the way we train our local mentors, um, uh, we've, we've given them a structure and scope for um, some wiggle room to iterate based on what they are asked. Um, in, in the village. So that's kind of where we've, uh, you know, tried to uh, handle this, this problem. Hi. Uh, uh, my question is a couple of questions. One is, uh, what is the target? When you say target audience, uh, what is the age group you, you are working with? Is, is it the entire range of kids you're working with or is it youth so it's plus children? Adolescents and adults, so uh, and young adults, ten to twenty-four year olds. Um, so ten we, to twenty-four years of age, yeah. Okay. Yes. So when we started researching on how we would develop this program, we realized that um, a lot of research suggests that aspirations or dreams actually start forming when you move from primary school. So, so we we've taken this. Uh, we, we wanted to start early because, especially in in the village context, um, you end up getting lost 
after you do after you know primary school or upper primary school where access is in the village and after that you have no idea what to do so that's okay. what you start early so sorry so, uh, sorry we can't hear you i think uh, some disturbance oh is is am i audible now Haan, i'm actually yeah, yeah, in the field right now and the yeah sure sure so one more connecting question is uh, so uh, there is mentor there, there is this uh, age group to target audience what is the end game you are looking at how these mentors will help these guys uh, help these children or age group to shape further where you want to take them actually exactly so um, we are taking them just to the next step right so so the program is designed so across this age group of 10 to 24 year olds it's broken down into th- three separate stages uh, 10 to 15 year olds 16 to 19 and 20 to 24 as a rough uh, you know thumb rule because uh, this these sub age groups all have different needs and different uh, requirements in terms of guidance or the kind of information they need so the offerings for them are different the idea is that as they walk away from the program they have enough information and agency to actually go to the next step themselves so for instance there were uh, about six girls that we worked with in a tribal village uh, for for a year and uh, they had dropped out of class 10 in 2019 um after, when the lockdown hit they they didn't know how to apply to colleges etc so and and they had not scored really well some of them had got 33% marks just barely passing and for two years they were in their village just not doing anything so we spent a year with them we kind of helped them um, you know uh, made them aware around their surroundings did some activities with them build their confidence and then helped them apply to um uh, colleges for class 11th and 12th because they wanted to uh, join the education mainstream so so that's where our high touch engagement with them ended we helped them apply we we had them select the colleges which will give them admission given their percentage and then um uh, they they kind of um uh, started their journey again and now we kind of track them on a uh, on a regular basis on a quarterly basis speak with them on the phone the mentors call them to just check okay. in how things are going etc sure sure thank you um essentially this this slide these four points kind of direct at what exactly is it that we are doing when we when we talk about mentorship i just have one question is there yes, a sir. way to um, route these people back to your initiative the ones that you have already helped say yes yeah uh, excellent question you sorry to cut your yeah no no that's all i wanted to know yeah. yeah yeah definitely so so we have like recently about 6 months ago we started with this concept called vikalp sathis who are um very local so who are these people that we that were with our program for about 6 7 months that are older uh 20 22 years of age and they um uh, have kind of done really well in the program they have um uh they they completed their graduation and came back to their villages and they want to do something for the community so we brought them on as volunteers who then now support our mentors in conducting these group sessions they they kind of you know are getting some sort of training while they are uh, in the village we give them a small stipend as well and the idea is that in the long term once we exit from a particular geography we are able to create this ecosystem of young people who who know and who are able to tell the younger generation to ask questions and where they can look for information uh, to make informed decisions yeah so you want it to be a more uh, sort of a sustainable ecosystem yes. once you leave because you Correct. can't be there for the for eternity essentially exactly exactly okay. so so we are trying to make it as community owned as possible and and because it's about youth and because it's about young people and their aspirations it's not something that you can do in two years and go out of right you it's not an infrastructure you are building so so you need to really build that uh, capacity that ecosystem so let's say one child from a village is able to maybe achieve their dream and and become an engineer for instance now the other younger ones in that village will have somebody to look up to he will be able to you know come back and guide them and tell them how to do things so just that kind of that, that's the vision that we are 
going forward. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, hello, Prachi. I would like to. Hi, Shandani. Hi. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to you and your team for working on a very complex problem and trying to solve. Actually, you have had great traction trying to solve this problem. So, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, thanks. So, what I've seen in the past four years, uh, you have started off with eight villages, then you have yes. spread out to 20, 50, and now you're operating on 80 villages, right? Yes. So great to work. So I'd Thank like you. to know that as you move forward, let's mm -hmm. say you want to uh, have traction on 800 villages, right? Right. What are, what are some of the logistical challenges that you'll yeah. face to decentralize yeah. your operation? And yeah. what are your plans of execution? Thank right. Thank, thank you for that question. So basically, um, the eight villages we started with was the pilot, like I mentioned. We, we knew that this is something that we had to work on and we went in, identified eight villages and started the work. Um, how we are doing this is with local partnerships. So we come, we are saying that we want to be enablers who create a program like this and want to bring it to communities um, that can own it. And we do that through partnerships with organizations that have worked with communities for a long time. So for instance, in Odisha, we have already partnered for two years now with Gram Vikas, who's been there for about 45 years now, who's worked with tribal communities in depth, uh, at their doorstep, solving various amount of problems, right from um, you know uh, wash infrastructure to, to water facilities, everything. So, so they have over 45 years of their work, they've built a rapport with the, uh, with the community, with uh, villagers, and through them, we bring this program for you. We are now in the process of partnering with another organization called Sevak, who, who works with farmer, progress, uh, farmer collaboratives in Orissa. Um, so again, that's one area. So, so the idea is that we partner, we find organizations that have worked with communities for a long time. We bring this program to them and they are the ones that take it to the community. We bring capacity building, training, uh, our m and infrastructure, our program, all of this design. And then they are the ones that implement it while we, you know, kind of help them do it. Oh, and the back end and the, sorry, one more thing. The back end and the system is, is all tech enabled. So we mm -hmm. developed an in-house uh, technology, uh, an MIS, which oh. uh, is used on the field and offline as well, uh, which has all of the curriculum, which does the onboarding and, and the learning management. Uh, Fantastic. So that would have been my next question. What would yeah. be the implementation of tech? And you have actually yeah. answered that for me. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you all the jury members. And uh, also, I would like to thank uh, Prachi for such a great presentation. I congratulate you. Uh, for, Thanks, uh, in, Yeah, for initiating this, uh, for, uh, with this presentation. Uh, I would like to request Apoor to please repeat about the roles. Yeah, so basically the rules are that each team get three minutes to pitch okay and uh, when the last 30 seconds are remaining i am going to uh, warn them about uh, that their time limit is about to be over also we have the time limit for juries that is uh, 5 minutes so once the 5 minutes are over i am going to inform you that yeah uh, you can stop now so uh, let's keep that in mind from the next round yeah, thank you, Apoor. Uh, so, for the second presentation, uh, we are having Anahat. Anahat for change. Okay. So, Purvi, uh, please go forward for the presentation. Uh, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, should I share the screen from my end? Yes, Purvi. Uh, let me know if it's visible. It is yes, visible. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Purvi Tanwani and I'm the co-founder and director of Anahat for Change Solutions Foundation and Anahat for Change Foundation. Uh, we are a, a non-profit hybrid model working uh, in Kolkata based out of West Bengal. 
Uh, we are a youth-led and youth-run organization co-founded in 2018 uh, by me and Namrita. We've been working to create an enabling environment for young girls and women by equipping the society with knowledge, life skills, and capacity development. Our vision uh, is to create a society where women and girls can enjoy equal rights and entitlement. The problem that we're trying to solve revolve around menstrual health and hygiene. 40,000 women uh, lose their lives due to poor menstrual health annually. 80% use unhygienic methods of uh, dealing with menstruation. 31% report in productivity during periods and miss an average of two to three days of work monthly. 23 million girls drop out of school on the onset of menstruation every single year. And 71% report having no knowledge of menstruation before they start their first period. And 70% women in India say family cannot afford to buy a sanitary napkin every month. Our project, which is called Project Unnati, provides health, environment, and livelihood impact to women and girls in vulnerable areas of West Bengal. Uh, we provide menstrual and sexual reproductive health awareness in schools, colleges, and communities, and especially to women and young girls in vulnerable parts of West Bengal, mostly in the bordering villages. Um, uh, we have a, a brand which is called Anahat Unnati, uh, which produces reusable cloth pads, uh, which is made by, again, by these women in the livelihood centers, which reduces the carbon footprint through a sustainable alternative option that we pro provide. And the livelihood opportunity that we give to these women to earn alternative livelihood through a community-based model. This is the Project Unity methodology. Uh, uh, we identify community and community leaders, preferably self-help group women. We help set up training centers with the help of ground partners, local leaders. We train the identified women on making of Unnati products, which is reusable cloth pads, baby diapers, and other sustainable menstrual care products. Then we extend work orders to these women groups after consistent handling, uh, hand holding and monitoring. And then we facilitate distribution of hygiene kits we'll through sponsorship. Sure, thank you. And handhold these women for further orders and also connect them with government schemes. Uh, Anahat's project provides dignified means of livelihood to 1200 plus women and young girls in six states of India. Uh, we've distributed more than 400,000 Anahat Unnati hygiene kits to more than 100,000 vulnerable menstruators across India. Uh, this is our business model. We provide skill development, livelihood training, grants projects, which is given to us by local governments, corporates, state uh, governments. Three minutes are up. Okay. Uh, we also uh, uh, take care of bulk orders. So this is how uh, the SKUs look in our website. We have more than 25 SKUs. I'm going to stop here and I would like to answer most of the questions uh, now. Thank you. Hello, Purvi. I would like to make the first question. So it's a very sensitive topic that you're working on and very burning concern in this part of the world in Asia, mostly. Uh, it's very concerning because what you have just shown that 80% of women in India still use um, uh, improper or unhygienic solutions for their menstruation uh, needs. So about the product Unnati that you have mentioned, you have already distributed 400,000. So that's a great, great need. Um, I would like to ask how much does it cost for you to make each unit? And as you move forward, is there a way to bring down the cost and make it more accessible for more people to use your product? Thank you, Purvi. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. So it's a very valid question. Why we started giving this alternative is because we found that cloth pads in India, uh, when we started operations in 2018, uh, we did some research and we saw that cloth pads were uh, uh, not very accessible. They were only available online. Uh, and they were very expensive. So uh, we did some research and we found that the cloth pad it can be made with three very basic materials. And we decided to set up livelihood centers in villages so that it brings down the entire cost of logistics um, and even making charges to some extent. And then we started uh, making these, um, you know, foldable cloth pads, which is very famous, which goes uh, becomes a part of our hygiene kit. And a kit, um, our kit in bulk costs 
close to 200 rupees. So it has four cloth pads, close to 50 rupees per pad. Uh, and it lasts for three years for a woman. So a person, a, a person, if it's, uh, you know, if, if he, if she, uh, if a menstruator is uh, uh, spending 200 for a hygiene kit, uh, she doesn't have to spend uh, any penny on a sanitary pad for the next three years. Um, but we play a different pricing model for bulk and different for D2C channels. So we have our website where we sell these products at a little higher cost because it involves the cost of handling, the platform. We are also available on Amazon and Flipkart, but the prices over there are different. So we say that we don't just want to open this market for vulnerable menstruators. This product is for everybody, anybody who wants to switch to a sustainable alternative, who cares enough about the environment and their health. Um, and that is why we have a separate different, absolutely different pricing for bulk and different for D2C. Uh, thank you so much, Bhuvi. I wish you got speak with this project. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hi Prachi. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Ahead, no, please, please go ahead. Rama, go ahead. Uh, this is actually a very, I mean, this is an issue that I have also encountered in so many parts, you know, so many different parts. Uh, and it's also a big, uh, I think it's very taboo to even talk about it. So congratulations on, you know, launching an entire product on the basis of something that people refuse to talk about. Um, I just want to know what, what is your next step? Like you're already, you know, already have a, you have a viable product that's commercialized. You have uh, a significant social impact as well. What is your next step? Uh, thank you for your words, Rama. And uh, uh, I would really like to answer the question. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, a commercialized product now, but we're very new to D2C market. We only started selling online and through our platform, which is anahatindati.com. Uh, it's only been two months. Uh, before this, we've only been serving bulk orders from different organizations, corporates. We've been trying to include this product in various CSR activities. So I think we're not yet there when it comes to D2C. And, uh, you know, the next thing that we see is that, you know, these 1,200 women who are getting livelihood, we want to make it consistent. Because we understand that these bulk orders and these, you know, CSR projects are not going to be very sustainable for their, um, you know, the livelihood that we're trying to provide. So the next big step that we see is we create a very strong B2C market for the um, uh, for the brand. Uh, we also registered this brand very recently. It looks like a very looks of like a very established brand been there throughout, but no, it's been only six months, and we are reaching out to various incubators to help us market the product. As I said, we are a hybrid model. We are a non-profit basically, and the kind of people who are there in our organization are all very strongly social impact related people so we don't have marketing persons we are, we have very little knowledge in digital media marketing and we're trying to hire you know consultants who can help us um bring this brand forward so okay. yeah got it all right so i would uh, like to inform you all that five minutes are over so please uh... Um, I can I can take questions later on also. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Purvi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Purvi, for such a great uh, presentation. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So yeah. Uh, so uh, on the third number, uh, we are having uh, energy innovations. So uh, be ready with your presentation. Uh, I request uh, to please uh, present your slide. Uh, can I start? Kar sakta hon? Sorry, my software issue is coming computer. Mein, so just my uh, uh, presentation will not be but uski kami aapko mehsoos nahi hone dunga can i start yeah it's sure. required akash we can share your presentation uh, i'll just uh, i'll just share okay i'm having your deck sir kyunki mujhe 5 minute pehle hi pata chal gaya tha mera camera nahi milega to i have my products ready uski zarurat nahi padegi no problem akash go for it fir bhi aapko chalana ho to aap chala sakte hain thank you 
yeah, I love the confidence. Go for it. Uh, thank you so much. Namaskar, sabhi judges ko, sabhi participants ko, aur sabhi organizers ko. Mera pyar bhara pranam. Main Akash Singh, main UP ke Greater Noida ke Jaiwar se hu. Aur ham log temple based management ki problem ko solve kar rahe hain communities ki help se. In India, we have more than five million temples. Aur temple ka saara ka saara dump. वेस्ट डंप होता है नदियों के अंदर जिससे बहुत ज्यादा पोल्यूशन होता है तो जो टेंपल वेस्ट को हम लोग कलेक्ट करते हैं वो ज्यादातर होती है एशेज और जो एशेज होती हैं वो बहुत ज्यादा हार्मफुल टेंपल वेस्ट होता है जो एक नॉर्मल एश सिगरेट की एश होती है उससे दस गुना ज्यादा हार्मफुल होती है अगरबत्ती धूपबत्ती की राख और जो नॉर्मली राख टेम्पल से निकलती है सो दो में ये चैलेंज मेरे सामने था जब मैं अपने दोस्तों के साथ मंदिर के किनारे पर जाके बैठता था वहां पर तालाब था हमने देखा धीरे धीरे करके वो जो तालाब है वो पूरी तरह से पोल्यूटेड हो चुका है उसके पीछे रिसर्च करके पता लगाया है वो पोल्यूटेड कैसे हुआ है तो पता चला उसमें हर हफ्ते 30 से 40 किलो राख डलती है और वो बहुत ज्यादा पॉइजनस है सो so, उससे पहले मैंने कुछ इनोवेशन किए थे विंड हार्नेसिंग मशीन सेल्फ पावर जनरेटिंग स्ट्रिक स्मार्ट इटियस स्प्रिंकल मशीन और मैं लेमन का दो का विनर भी रह चुका हूँ अपनी एक इनोवेशन को लेकर तो तब समझ में आया ये प्रॉब्लम सोल्व करनी है तो सिर्फ अवेयरनेस से काम नहीं चलेगा आगे आके कुछ करना होगा स्टार्टिंग करिए एनर्जी इनोवेशन की तो एनर्जी इनोवेशन में हम गवर्नमेंट बॉडीज के साथ पार्टनरशिप करते हैं कॉलोब्रेशन करते हैं और उनके लिए जो पहले टेम्पल बेस्ट का चैलेंज था वो टेम्पल बेस्ट उठा के हमको देते हैं और उनको हम लोग ने स्टार्ट किया जेल इनवेट के साथ इन इंडिया मोर देन सिक्सटी नाइन जेल इनवेट आर अंडर ट्राइल हम लोगों ने उन अंडर ट्राइल जेल इनवेट को पहले ट्रेनिंग दिया ट्रेनिंग देने के बाद उनको एम्प्लॉयमेंट दिया so, अभी तक हम लोगों ने फोर्टी सिक्स जेल इनवेट को एम्प्लॉयमेंट दिया है और हम 50% उनकी फैमिली को पे करते हैं 50% उनको पे करते हैं हम लोग टेम्पल बेस से बनाते क्या हैं? ये जो आप गणपति की स्टैचू देख रहे हैं ये टेम्पल बेस से बनी हुई है जो मंदिर से जो राख निकलती है अगरबत्ती धूपबत्ती की वी सोल्ड मोर देन 7500 थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड गणपति स्टैचू जस्ट इन फोर डेज इन दिस गणपति फेस्टिवल हम लोगों ने राखी बनाई और ग्यारह हजार राखिया सोल्ड आउट करी नौ दिन के अंदर लाइक वी रिसीव बेस्ट सेलर अवॉर्ड फ्रॉम स्टार्ट अप इंडिया और आ, हम लोगों ने अभी तक 11,450 मैट्रिक टन टेंपल वेस्ट अपसाइकिल किया है चार साल के अंदर जिसमें से 230 बहुत ज्यादा केमिकली पेस्टिसाइड्स ऑफसेट किया है हम लोगों ने 1168 फैमिलीज को अभी तक एम्प्लॉयमेंट दिया है जिसमें से 150 फैमिलीज कंटिन्यू ये प्रोडक्ट बना रही है हमारे सामने एक बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज था कि हम एनर्जनी में काम तो अच्छा कर रहे हैं पर उसे स्केल कैसे कर रहे हैं 2022 के अंदर हम लोगों ने अपना ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम लॉन्च किया और अभी हम लोग मथुरा से लेके मदुरई तक ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम चला रहे हैं इन एनर्जी इनोवेशन वी बिलीव हर मंदिर कम से कम दो से तीन लोगों को एम्प्लॉयमेंट दे सकता है अगर उसके टेम्पल बेस्ट को सही से यूटिलाइज किया जाए तो तो अभी हम लोग ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में बारह से ज्यादा लोगों को ट्रेन कर चुके हैं एच फाउंडेशन शिवनादर फाउंडेशन आईसीआईसी बैंक ये सब हमारे क्लाइंट्स हैं हम लोग कॉर्पोरेट गिफ्टिंग भी करते हैं यूरोपियन मार्केट में इंडिया में जैसे रेजर पे के साथ मास्टर कार्ड के साथ अलग अलग संस्थाओं के साथ और हम लोग का पूरा का पूरा सेल्फ का मॉडल है हम लोग जो चीजें बनाते हैं वो सोल्ड आउट करते हैं उनसे इनकम आती है कम्युनिटीज को पे करते हैं और दूसरा ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम हम लोग चलाते हैं और ये अभी राम मंदिर नेपाल के पीएम आए थे उनको गिफ्ट हुआ था और पीएम मोदी जब केदारनाथ गए थे तो उनको भी गिफ्ट हुआ था थैंक यू I think yeah. it's a wonderful idea, particularly targeting the temple waste, and uh, uh, I think recycle. Any thing you do to do, make it more sustainable. Uh, that's a wonderful way to go about it. I just have, uh, you know, what more uses do you have for these temple waste besides uh, from what you already have built, and what is your long term goal? Uh, you know, is in it. Can you just quickly elaborate on that? डेफिनेटली ये कुछ प्रोडक्ट है जो मैंने आपको अब इमीडिएटली दिखाए वी हैव मोर देन वन एटी प्रोडक्ट हम लोग प्लांटेबल पॉट्स फेस पॉट्स आजकल जैसे मान के चलो जो बीबीज पैदा होते हैं तो उनके भी लोग ना थ्री डी में बनवाते हैं हम लोग वो तक बनाते हैं हम लोग पूरा फेस स्कैन करते हैं बॉडी स्कैन करके स्टेचूज बनाते हैं और भी बहुत सारी चीजें हैं हम लोग हरियाणा गवर्नमेंट के लिए बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ का मूवमेंट बना रहे हैं जिसमें एक गर्ल्ड चाइल्ड पढ़ाई कर रही है ऐसे करके बहुत बड़े बड़े कॉर्पोरेट क्लाइंट्स के लिए हम लोग मूवमेंटोज बनाते हैं हम लोग ट्रॉफीज बनाते हैं हम लोग पॉट्स बनाते हैं हम लोग भगवानों की मूर्तियां बनाते हैं तो ऐसे करके डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स हैं हमारी मन एटी काइंड के प्रोडक्ट हैं इंस्टाग्राम पेज पे आप लोग जाके चेक कर सकते हैं और हमारी डेक के अंदर भी है कैन आई सेफली से वुड 
सो प्लास्टिक इज डिफरेंट मतलब प्लास्टिक ज्यादा मोल्डेबल है हम लोग रिप्लेस कर रहे हैं पीओपी को जो बहुत ज्यादा खतरनाक है इन्वायरमेंट के लिए क्योंकि ज्यादातर जो स्टेचूज वगैरह बनती है वो पीओपी से बनती है और जब वो वाटर में डिजोल्व होती है तो उससे बहुत ज्यादा पॉल्यूशन होता है लाइक हम लोग की कुछ लिमिटेशन है जो प्लास्टिक की नहीं है पर डेफिनेटली हम लोग बहुत सारी चीजों में प्लास्टिक को भी रिप्लेस कर रहे हैं और जो हमारे प्रोडक्ट की लाइफ होती है वो कम से कम पांच साल की होती है थैंक यू सो एक क्वेश्चन है मेरा वाइल यू आर सॉल्विंग आकाश बहुत बड़ा प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व कर रहे हो आप उसका जो टेंपल वेस्ट के अंदर राख तो एक चीज होता है उसके अंदर बहुत सारे फूल भी आते हैं बहुत सारे फूल भी निकल गए जो लोग नदी में बहा देते हैं आप उनके साथ भी कुछ करते हो क्योंकि तो मैंने कुछ साल पहले एक सिमिलर मॉडल कानपुर में सुना था सुना नहीं अंकित अग्रवाल हैं जो आपसे हाँ, तीन साल तीन साल हाँ, फूल जो है वो तीन साल सीनियर वो हमारे इनक्यूबेटी रह चुके हैं एक्चुअली वो कानपुर के अंदर इसको काफी बड़े लेवल पे आईटी कानपुर के साथ एक मॉडल बिल्ड करके कर रहे थे शुरू में वो अगरबत्ती वगैरह बना रहे थे लेकिन बाद में मैंने सुना कि बहुत सारे प्रोडक्ट वो बना रहे हैं तो वीजा भी उनके और आपके मॉडल में क्या डिफरेंस है उसके अंदर हाउ इट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट मॉडल हाउ इनोवेटिव योर आपका मॉडल कितना इनोवेटिव है उनके उनके मुकाबले के अंदर नमस्कार सर तो जब हम लोग ने पहली बार स्टडी किया था तो हमको पता था यू में फूल इंक्यूबेटेड है और फूल हमारे लिए हमेशा से इंस्पिरेशन का सोर्स रहा है पहले उनका नाम हेल्पस ग्रीन था तो फूल हाँ. क्या फूल की स्टार्टिंग कैसे हुई वो लोग टेम्पल से फ्लॉवर्स कलेक्ट करके अगरबत्ती धूपबत्ती बना रहे थे तो जब हम लोगों ने एड से ये प्रोडक्ट बनाने स्टार्ट किए तो हमको भी लगा कि हमको भी अगरबत्ती धूपबत्ती बनानी चाहिए पर जिस मोटो के साथ मैंने ये स्टार्ट किया था वो मोटो ये था मुझसे मंदिर के बुजारी ने ये बोला था कि इस रात को मैं नदी में फेंकू तो क्या करूं तो कहीं ना कहीं पॉल्यूशन रोकने का और हम लोगों ने जो अगरबत्ती धूपबत्तियां बनाई भी उनको बाइंडिंग मटेरियल करने के लिए और फ्रेगनेंस मटेरियल करने के लिए वो कहीं ना कहीं एयर पॉल्यूशन कर रही थी तो हम लोगों ने डिसाइड किया कि हम फूल का से अगरबत्ती धूपबत्तियां नहीं बनाएंगे वो ऑलरेडी हेल्पस ग्रीन और फूल बहुत अच्छे से कर रहा है हम फ्लॉवर्स को चेंज कर रहे हैं कम्पोस्ट में नॉर्मली और जो और टेंपल बेस्ड है उससे अलग अलग चीजें बना रहे हैं तो हमारे ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के थ्रू हम लोग लोगों को यही सिखाते हैं कि वो किस किस टेंपल बेस्ड को कैसे कैसे यूटिलाइज करके सेल्फ सस्टेनेबल बन सकते हैं so, वो भी तो जो टेंपल बेस्ड से मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट्स बना रहे हैं उसके अंदर फूल से बना रहे हैं राख से बना रहे हैं मल्टीपल चीजें कर रहे हैं उसके अंदर इवन वाइन का कास्क बना रहे हैं बहुत चीजें बना रहे हैं जो वाइन का कास्क आता है जो जो एक्चुअली वुड का होता है उसको सेम क्वालिटी में रिप्लेस करके जो मैं तीन साल पहले देखा था अब तो काफी आगे बढ़े हैं फ्लावर्स फ्लावर से लेके आज के टाइम पे उनके बहुत सारे ब्रांड्स के साथ कॉलोब्रेशन है और वो लोग ज्यादातर चीजें कर रहे हैं वो लोग चॉकलेट वो बना नहीं रहे वो कॉलोब्रेशन करके चॉकलेट भी बेच रहे हैं वो लोग बहुत अगरबत्ती स्टैंड भी बेच रहे हैं बहुत सारी चीजें बेच रहे हैं पर हम ये जो बना रहे हैं ये टेंपल बेस से बना रहे हैं और इसका अलग चीज है जैसे उन्होंने भी, भी राखी बनाई तागे की राखी बेची हम लोगों ने भी राखी बनाई टेंपल एश से राखी बेची तो ऐसे करके काफी सिमिलर है पर दोनों का कॉन्सेप्ट पूरी तरह से अलग अलग है वो लोग फ्लॉवर के ऊपर बेस्ड है हम लोग एशेस के ऊपर बेस्ड है और डेफिनेटली uh, हम लोग की बातचीत चल रही है कोलोब्रेशन करने से uh, तीन महीने से हम लोग टच में हैं कि कैसे एक दूसरे के प्रोडक्ट को सपोर्ट कर सकते हैं तो हो सकता है कि आने वाले टाइम में आपको देखने को मिले कि फूल हमारे प्रोडक्ट को प्रमोट कर रहा है और हम उनको को कर रहे हैं डेफिनेटली फूल अभी के टाइम पे हमसे बहुत बड़ा है पर हम लोग के कॉन्सेप्ट काफी हद तक सिमिलर है इसीलिए हम लोग कोलोबरेट कर रहे हैं थैंक्स आकाश ग्रेट वर्क आकाश fantastic first of all it is a very good example of a circular economy you are bringing out the waste from the temple and also sending a brand new uh, ganesh ji ka murti into the temple so it's a perfect circular economy and the problem that you're dealing with the ash is actually very harmful for us right so um, as you've just said that there are 5 million temples in india that's a lot of temples that means a lot of waste so as you move forward i would like to know that do you see yourself manufacturing products or do you see yourself as a provider of raw materials to the already existing manufacturing plant so that you don't need to get into the operation part of manufacturing what is your long term plan with your project thank you thank you for asking this question again ye question pehle bhi mujhse pucha tha par main bhul gaya tha uska answer nahi kar paya तो हम लोगों का 2022 में यही बड़ा चैलेंज था कि हम लोग बहुत अच्छा कर रहे हैं 
गवर्नमेंट अथॉरिटीज के साथ कोलोब्रेशन है हमको फ्री में टेम्पल बेस मिल रहा है जेल में हम लोग का काम स्टार्ट हो रहा है हम... पर हम लोग फेल नहीं कर पा रहे थे तो हम लोगों के पास बहुत सारे अलग अलग स्टेट अथॉरिटीज से अलग अलग एनजीओ से इंक्वायरीज आती थी कि हम लोग बी ए स्टार्ट करना चाहते हैं कैसे स्टार्ट कर सके अब हम लोग के पास इतना ना कैपिटल है ना इतनी बड़ी टीम है जो हम लोग हर स्टेट में स्टार्ट कर सके तो हम लोगों ने डेडिकेटेडली तीन महीने लग के ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम डिजाइन किया और अभी तक वो ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम हम लोग ट्वेंटी अलग अलग लोकेशन पर दे चुके हैं ये पंद्रह दिन का ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम होता है जहां पे जाके हम लोग उन कम्युनिटीज को या उस एनजीओ को सिखाते हैं कि कैसे आप किसी भी टेंपल बेस्ड को यूटिलाइज करके ये प्रोडक्ट बना सकते हैं हम उनको मोल्ड प्रोवाइड कराते हैं हम लोग उनको पैकेजिंग सिखाते हैं हम लोग उनको सेल सिखाते हैं हम लोग उनको टेंपल बेस्ड को यूटिलाइज करना सिखाते हैं तो हमारी सेल्स बहुत अच्छी होती है पर ज्यादातर वो सीजनल सेल्स होती है फेस्टिवल टाइम पे ऐसे करके तो हम आने वाले टाइम में एनर्जी इनोवेशन को देख रहे हैं एक ट्रेनर की फॉर्म में जो लोगों को सिखाए कि इन टेम्पल बेस्ड को यूटिलाइज कैसे किया जा सकता है हमारे ऊपर एमेजोन प्राइम पे एक डॉक्यूमेंट्री बनी है जिसका नाम है जो आज के टाइम पे यूएस यूरोप कैनेडा ऑस्ट्रेलिया इंडिया में अभी रिलीज नहीं हुई अमेजोन प्राइम पे ये दुख की बात है पर जल्दी हो जाएगी इन सारी कंट्रीज में अवेलेबल है बारह इंटरनेशनल अवार्ड जीती है इस साल हमको निर्मला सीतारमन जी से यंग चेंज मेकर अवार्ड मिला है और उसके साथ ही साथ हम लोगों को यूनाइटेड नेशंस वी अवार्ड मिला है तो हम लोग जो इम्पैक्ट का काम कर रहे हैं डेफिनेटली वो धीरे धीरे हो रहा है पर हमको पूरा यकीन है आने वाले पांच सालों में इंडिया का कोई ऐसा टेम्पल नहीं बचेगा जिसका वेस्ट डंप होगा रिवर्स के अंदर थैंक यू I don't have a question, but Akash, you are you are amazing. You, I mean, the confidence that with with which you're speaking, it's I really I really like you. I mean, I just thought I should say that out loud, and you know, it's it's amazing the way you're pitching, and you're not stopping for timers and anybody else. Amazing, very good. And I'm learning English. 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 कोशिश करूंगा कि यही भी चले लैंग्वेज लैंग्वेज शुड बी अ बैरियर आपके लिए बैरियर नहीं होनी चाहिए यू आर डूइंग वेरी वेल कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन ऑन दैट थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच आकाश और सच में एज रम्मा सेड इट इट वाज रियली ग्रेट यू नो वो जो कॉन्फिडेंस था ना सच में वो मतलब बाकी कॉम्पिटिटर्स को भी एक अच्छा मोटिवेशन भी देने देने वाला कॉन्फिडेंस था ये सो वंस अगेन कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन आकाश सो वी विल गो फॉरवर्ड फॉर द क्लोवर्क इनोवेशन डू वी हैव क्लोवर्क इनोवेशन आई थिंक सूर्या इज देयर राइट सो या so uh, welcome to everybody this is surya from uh, vellore uh, tamil nadu so i'm representing the uh, clock innovation so what we are making is uh, we found three problems actually the so one is uh, a rural care in uh, uh, a rural uh, dental care right, in india so where uh, as per the who the uh, the ratio of the dentist to the patient the uh, sorry to the people is very uh, one is to 5000 in the urban india we attained that passing uh, earlier so we have a 1 is to 4000 but in rural we have 1 is to 35000 so this difference is dark uh, when you say in india it's around uh, 70 percent that is rural so where uh, do you even find any dentist there so what we made is so we made a portable dental clinic it's like suitcase like product where the dental equipments all the uh, traditional dental equipments would be there and uh, uh, the dentist can carry that so the problems what we uh, sorry uh, right the uh, as for the clinics when we go there the uh, bedridden people all uh, uh, the uh, domiciliary people they cannot come to the clinics and in access area there is no access so uh, when you see the uh, dental students we find a pattern that uh, after uh, research that uh, uh, when uh, there is uh, after some, there are around 40000 people come out uh, from the dentistry graduate each year 
uh, in that 45 percent age of people doesn't go for dentistry profession they go for any administration healthcare sector any other uh, place because they find that uh, heavy competition in the urban so they see that the amount of or the return of investment they can get is only in urban so when they invest 25 lakhs uh, to an uh, clinic setup so they cannot take that uh, return back with the heavy competition already they present in the uh, urban area so the camps when this, this to solve this government has made so many uh, changes that uh, they made the national rural mission uh, uh, thing so where they go for a camp the dental colleges are requested to go for uh, camps regularly into the rural so where the problem is technology barrier so they cannot take every instrument as well as uh, they are not being comfortable without the dental chair or the uh, dental stool for the dent- uh, dentist because they have been teach that for four years that they need to be uh, in the correct position to sit so to solve this the mobile dental clinic came very expensive and only one patient at a time can be done so in case take the uh, case of pondicherry uh, what we are uh, working with the last so where uh, there are government yeah sure the government is appointed uh, around uh, six people and they are paying for six people and they have only one vehicle they can go for a camp so only one dentist can perform other five or uh, simply uh, sitting and the patients come there uh, with the other work they will be having so when they tend to lo- wait for a long time they go so that the mission cannot be accomplished so this is our uh, prototype uh, what we made and it's in rural in the pondicherry government uh, thing and we are uh, trying to expand that and um, this little validation for what we have done yeah thank you any questions uh, we can ask this my team <coughs> Yes, you can ask. Uh, my time is over. Ba. Thank you very much, uh, Surya. Can you just show a couple of uh, you know pictures of the product that you have? This is the first product we made. And this uh, is prototype ready, or do you have this in production also? Yeah. no we are ready and we are uh, going for the regulatory approvals we are waiting for the regulatory approvals so for the initial phase we are given to pondicherry government where they have been testing right now thank you no more questions uh hi surya hi sir Uh, yeah it's a very interesting concept because dental healthcare as we know is not taken seriously and it actually poses to be a very big concern as people uh, it matures with age and you have actually identified a very valid concern um so i would like to know how do you collaborate with doctors first question and as you move forward like what is the cost that you need to incur per unit behind those mobile dental facilities yeah so we collaborate uh, as the uh, indian market concerned so people the dentist doesn't buy the indian products this is the fact because of uh, uh, before uh, happened some mistakes happened by before manufacturers this is the case in india so what we did is to get the uh, 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 trust from them so we are given to rolling out to the national oral mission team of governments of various states so where they are uh, using that so where uh, in turn will uh, get the uh, attention of the dentist this is what we are doing and the cost of it is to set up a clinic with a stationary setup in the urban area or uh, anywhere so it's cost around 25 lakhs to set up so what we are giving is we are giving it as an 1 lakh and also we are giving some more additional features also which doesn't come in the uh, uh, traditional setup so the uh, ultra or uh, the scan scanners app development ai so those technology also we have included so it reduces their uh, thing also with the app uh, patient uh, they can book their uh, slot and uh, they can go home it is very easy for them to get the customer also from that fantastic thank thank you surya yeah thanks maybe i didn't explain properly or uh, Uh, the questions are uh, i am not getting the questions no actually i have a very limited knowledge on uh, you know right. this kind of technology so just trying to get the concept first right yeah 
I don't yeah, think meanwhile, any... if I may ask, I'm sorry, Rama, if you want to go ahead. No, 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 done. All right, uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna pose a hypothetical question. Say you get a grant of $10 million. How do you okay. plan on executing that fund into your project? Uh, we already got around uh, something around $1 million already. We have got business grant. So with that, we built the technology and we have given to many governments uh, uh, as a fee. Because uh, that's where the awareness creates. The government creates, uh, government is investing much money. So when we support with the technology, what they didn't have, so it reaches the millions. Then uh, after that, we can get the uh, money from uh, anywhere. Uh, that's the secondary part. But where the uh, impact, what we need to make, that's what we concern. So if I get the money, I'll make the production units and distribute to various states of uh, India. Are you utilizing these funds for your uh, trademarks and copyright, uh, I mean, the patents and things like that? Because yeah, well, we have already got those things. So the coming your money presentation, will... presentation says that, uh, you yeah. know, the utility patent yeah. and design patent is yet to be applied. So, uh, yeah, we have applied uh, right now, but we didn't get the patent uh, uh, granted. So it's in uh -huh. process. It's not updated in this PPD presentation. All right. All right. Oh, thank you very much, Rama. Amitabh ji, do you have any question? Uh, no, I only had question about patent and all, which I think Rama asked. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next startup. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Surya. So, for the next startup, uh, we are having... Growth book, uh, yeah. Uh, do we have the yeah growth book, Aditi? So can you please share the presentation? Hi Rahul, uh, Doctor Anand will be sharing this screen. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think so. We can hear. Uh, probably the mic is mute. Uh, Sir, we can't hear anything. Hello, Aditi, Dr. Anand. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. I think now, now it is visible. Sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, yeah so uh, good afternoon, all of you. I am Dr. Anand, founder of Growthbook app. So while I was pursuing my MD course, the post-graduation course in public health, I came to know about two big problems with pediatric health. Number one was problem of growth and malnutrition, which is already stated by WHO UNICEF, and it is also on one of the sustainable development goal. For India, uh, as per the survey conducted by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, around 35% of children are having uh, stunted height and 32% are underweight. Second big problem, which is actually even bigger and which is attributed to the first problem, is significant prevalence of misconception, misbelief, and non-evidence-based practice. Uh, if, uh, like, I have highlighted one of the study in which 43% of parents were not not aware about child's illness, 77% uh, in misbelief, ke kisi ne dekh liya to nazar lag gai, and that kind of thing. 36% of children uh, of parents were using non-evidence-based uh, treatment, like. If they have constipation, they are feeding castor oil uh, just to relieve uh, constipation. So such kind of parental behavior was is, is very common and it has been since ages, even after many uh, research uh, and scientific evidence have come out. So this was the time I thought that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can I can solve uh, a problem at a smaller level, at my level. And, and I thought to uh, make an application which is called as growth book application. So today, very proudly, I can say that growth book stands at 4.5 lakh downloads with around 20% retention rate with an average rating of 4.6 uh, on Google Play Store with more than 2400 reviews. Uh, we have in-app chat consultation module where a user can ask 
any number of queries and they can they can get immediate uh, response uh, uh, for non interventional um, uh, health questions we have 36 whatsapp group which might be probably the largest parenting community over whatsapp uh, and where we answer more than 300 health queries every day for keywords like uh, growth chart baby chart parent app we are coming in top category among play store across the group uh, uh, we have downloads from and users from more than 120 countries which which makes us a global app uh, again, very proudly, I can say that we have been selected as one of the top 100 apps by Google App Scale Academy Batch 2022. Recently, we are also selected with uh, AWS Ed Startup Program and Geo Developer Program. We are recognized and supported by CIE, uh, that is an incubation center at IIM Ahmedabad, and IIC PDPU, which is in Ahmedabad. We are registered as an incubator there. The solutions which we offer are simple road tracking tools, uh, a simple development tool which a mother can understand, Last nutrition and recipe. Nutrition and recipe, vaccination tracker. We provide every day a scientific health tip as per the age of uh, uh, baby and some chat uh, messages. So now these are the validation which has come directly from our users and real sources of motivation for our team. I have kept few of the snapshots from WhatsApp and Play Store. I will read out a few of them. Like uh, to the doctors, thank you all for your efforts and you are doing an amazing job. How you are making sure to answer each and every mother's question, even if the question was asked several times before. This is wonderful and no words can express uh, this gratefulness. One, one, one last, uh, like this app has helped me to realize that my daughter was uh, uh, undernourished and I, then they have visited pediatrician. They have got the right uh, formula for her uh, and the feeding methods. And then uh, she was uh, she has recovered and her, her weight was putting on. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, I'm ready for questions. Uh, Dr. Anand, um, you have done a commendable job against the combating... Commendable job? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, please. Come in. Uh, yeah. So you have done a commendable job combating the malnutrition of the next generation. So um, you have stated out some of the impressive numbers that you have 4.5 lakhs download on a Play Store and 20% uh, retention rate. So yes. can you give us an idea about how? Do, what are your strategies to retain your customers and how do you improve that retention rate? Thank you. Yes. Yes. So uh, we have we have around 4.5 lakh downloads. Out of them, 33% are from India and rest are from the other parts of the world. Uh, if I uh, state like like 15% are from USA also. And uh, so the retention policy is very simple. Uh, whenever a user enrolls in our application, they 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 have two options. Either they can ask questions from within the app if if they don't want to re, uh, reveal their identity and mobile number then they can ask from within the app otherwise they can join our whatsapp community uh, uh, with a consent so uh, in case uh, if if their baby or child is having any issue they can they can ask the question and immediately we we, we respond to them so you know uh, we have trusted users from more than 3 years 4 years we have started this application in 2000 late 2018 so we also have users from from last 4 years like they have enrolled for the first child, but now they're asking question for the second child. So this is the simple strategy. We are we are answering each and every question, even if it is asked multiple times. And we are just providing them scientific knowledge. We are not advising any medication over or any intervention over this platform. We are just advising that this is normal because 90% of pediatric issue doesn't need any medication. Uh, they just need an assurance from a scientific person that that if your baby is not passing stool from since two or three days, then this is absolutely normal. You don't have to do anything. This is normal physiological thing. And in case we found anything uh, abnormal, we immediately refer them to pediatrician. We don't advise or intervene anything. So this is a simple strategy. Fantastic. And Dr. Anand, do you, do you charge for the consultation? Nothing, nothing. Absolutely free. This, 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 this all have been absolutely free. Actually, I have started this application uh, uh, it, it was just a passion driven uh, project. So I, I didn't want to make this a business uh, venture. But eventually uh, I have I have like I have I have put on a lot of money from my pocket to, to build this application. So uh, after four years, you know, uh, the mentors from different incubation center uh, ha have advised me like you can you can continue this free part. But on, uh, but parallelly, you can also build a uh, ecosystem where you can generate some revenue to sustain this and to reach more parents. 
so that was the reason that in 2021 i i, I invited two uh, more co-founders one is from the marketing side and another is from the product side so i don't have to pay for marketing and i don't have to pay for the product so this was the basic sense and so now as they are in we are we are we are trying few of the revenue model but till now we have not generated any uh, any sustainable revenue uh, what are the uh, revenue models that are trying to explore for the future yes, that will yes. bring in money yes uh, number one is uh, associated uh, consultations like uh, the parenting associated consultation like feeding consultation if any mother is having uh, issue with feeding then they can have a video consultation directly from the app uh, then speech consultation speech therapies uh, dietitian nutrition uh, temp, uh, uh, management for temper tantrums or uh, this kind of things like so this is one of the thing another is we are trying to uh, we are in talks with many parenting uh, play uh, play group schools where they can where they can use this tool to monitor uh, growth and development of uh, the students coming in their school you know and every monthly they can monitor and they can they can share this feedback to uh, young parents uh, and they can intervene if uh, uh, anything is going wrong so these are the two model which we will try we are also trying for e market uh, platform but that is uh, much way forward so i will not talk much on that thank you thank you dr anand thank you hello dr anand hello yes go ahead reva go ahead <laughs> so sorry uh just one question would you have a um, uh, inclusion of um, kids who have autism or kids who have adhd or uh, you know similar uh, you know issues uh, that could also be resolved over your app yes we uh, we 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 always uh, forward many checklist uh, for autism and this where where mothers uh, themselves uh, uh, can identify autism and uh, they reach to us and then we uh, divert them to their own pediatrician because currently we have not channelized like to whom we can forward but uh, we can definitely include this okay but yes. we we have identified like in in last four years we have identified more than 10 um, uh, children with autism and we have forwarded them to their respective pediatrician okay in early in early stages all right that's it yeah thank you so 5 minutes are already up but uh, we can go with one last question so one question dr anand uh, from my side uh, amitabh vyas here so just wanted to check uh, uh, while uh, we have an app and uh, i think this is a phenomenal uh, follow followers are there who are using that app and you getting good traction uh, but uh, on the other side there is under self community in all who may not have access to uh this kind of technology and all actually so how and i believe what you are doing is very novel and they also need access they also need same kind of support so how will your model can be accessible to them uh any any approach you have for for them well i i don't have any approach but uh, uh the simple thing is with every uh, like with every month the the internet penetration is increasing and you know uh, so now we 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 have users from very remote location we have very simple users like who can who can type question only in hindi they they do not know how to type in english so we also have such kind of uh, users but currently we are like uh, as a, as a single doctor or as a single founder i am not able to reach those kind of community but uh, this will open my mind also and this i will i will think something for this and we we can also include them one day yes hopefully thanks thanks dr yeah thank you uh thank you thank you so much dr anand uh yeah, so you. the next speech is going to be done by uh ekibeki start so vishpala can you please share the slide vishpala your your mic is on mute ha huh, okay thank you uh, uh, i have a slight uh, uh, internet issue i'll be using my mobile hot hotspot so while i'm presenting i'll just switch off my video and because the bandwidth i have some bandwidth issue i'm uh, in a village right now
Oh, hi, Vishpala. Uh, do you need help with, uh, with sharing yeah. this? Uh, I can uh, just, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, my voice reaches okay. while I'm presenting. Uh, you can see it, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to start with a story. Uh, this is Chetan. He comes from a family of Chitrakathi artisans, which is in a small village called Kudar in Maharashtra. He is the first diploma holder engineer from his family. With stars in his eyes, he came to Mumbai to work as an engineer. Unfortunately, staying in shared accommodation, eating outside food and staying away from his family took its toll on his health and he fell ill. He was at his lowest when he had to abandon his dream of working in a big city and return home to his parents to get back to his former self. Chetan's family performs a 400-year-old unique craft called Chitrakathi. Unfortunately, there are only five artisans left. Uh, I hope you can see my screen, which is going forward. Yes, yes. Reluctantly, he started performing with his father and brother. His father, Shri Parshuram Gangaune, is a very famous artist who recently received Padmashri for, for his contribution towards the craft. Uh, who are we and why we are concerned about Chetan. We are Eki Beki and we are working with people like Chetan and his family to revive dying and unique indigenous crafts of India. We want to see the change from protection to promotion of crafts in India. With over 7 million skilled artisans, India and over 2 million semi-skilled artisans, India has over 3000 unique arts and crafts, out of which 200 are endangered uh, crafts. These are as endangered as the tigers were a few years back in our country. The global economy for handicrafts is huge at $680 billion, but India's share is less than 2%. It's at 1.68% as of now. Unfortunately, uh, 60 to 70% handicrafts that are uh, sold in India are machine-made products which come from China and Vietnam. So, uh, we have come up with a six-prong approach to tackle this problem. We want people to look at handicrafts with pride and not pity. So what we do is we do awareness uh, generation, engagement with the artisans to bring them back to the craft, skill building because they are not practicing the craft full-time. Uh, we help them with design inputs. Uh, uh, we have a very strong team of uh, designers. I am a designer from NID. Uh, we help them with market linkages and benefit sharing and reinvestment. These are some of the examples of awareness building through workshops at various uh, places. Last 30 seconds. Yeah, these are our project, product, <coughs> product ranges uh, uh, and the projects, including NFTs and interiors and crafts. These are some uh, impact numbers. I am not going to go in detail, but we have managed to... <coughs> uh, get back six crafts to uh, uh, livelihood. And last but not the least, before I leave, I would want to show you what Chetan is doing. Last four years, we have been working with him consistently. Thank Today, he's a well-known figure using technology to take Chitrakathi to the next level and is changing the way crafts are practiced. This is his daughter who is performing with him. And in last 400 years, not a single female or a girl child or any women have ever practiced this. Um, one second. Yeah. So yeah, this is where we are. Uh, I'm ready for any questions. Bishpala, uh, I think uh, it was a wonderful and a very clear pitch. Uh, you know, congratulations on that. I really enjoyed that uh, clarity on it. Uh, and secondly, I think the problem that you are addressing, it's uh, I think uh, it's not just India's problem anymore. It's I think a global problem because of the you know emerge of technology, the crafts, the you know original handicrafts are dying all over the world. And it's not just native to India. It's uh, you know uh, South Asia, it's Africa, it's even South America and uh, so many Far Eastern countries as well. I just want to understand uh, what is your, you know, uh, business model behind it? How does it work? Can you just quickly, uh, you know, share some light on it? Yeah, so this is a hybrid organization. The NGO 
uh, works in mobilization, skill building, uh, up to design development. The designs which we develop with the artisans, they are, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they are supposed to ideally take it to the market themselves. But because we are working with uh, smaller groups, that was not happening. So in uh, 2019, we had to start with a for-profit organization, which uh, does uh, buying and selling uh, through B2B, B2C, uh, various channels. And uh, all the money which comes, the profits go back to the NGO. And that is how we have been so far self-sustaining. Self but now we want to scale up. So we are uh, looking out for grants. And does that answer your question? Or I can go in detail, but because it's only five minutes, I'm, I was just trying to zip through it. it. It covers it up. Thank you very much. So hi, Vishpala. This is Amitabh here. Uh, so my question is, uh, well, I heard there's a hybrid model and the all the... Uh, Profit coming into for profit or uh, entities going back to the NGO. Uh, how are we uh, helping these artisans in terms of is the profit uh, some part of profit going back to these artisans directly? How their how their lives are benefited in terms of or they're paid on a monthly basis? What is your model of yeah. that? Yeah, so it is uh, we work with the producer companies. So these, uh, all the artisans have their own companies. They don't like to be part of, uh, they don't like to come under any organization that is uh, more to do with uh, their concept of dignity. So none of them are our employees. Uh, they run their own independent uh, organizations. We place the orders. Uh, how they benefit is we help them in design development. We help them in skill training capacity building in whichever way, be it machinery, be it, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever uh, technology, uh, uh, photography skills. So all these things, uh, the NGO provides to them. Uh, and uh, when, unless they tell us that they are not able to sell it, we don't even take up the products from them. But then we have a certain assured, uh, we have those MOUs with the artisans where we tell them after training, uh, what is it that you would, uh, expect uh, the sales uh, revenue you would expect from us so we have those different with different artisan based on the type of craft they are doing the number of people uh, involved in that so just to give you a small example we have uh, just trained 100 women in orissa in golden grass so golden grass being um, you know a natural fiber and we are making very small items out of it these women earn four to five thousand a month wherein the other craft which we work with is uh, copper enameling, where there are only 15, uh, 16 artisans. Uh, there were five, we have uh, now reached 15. Uh, here, the artisans are earning somewhere around 10 to 15,000, depending on their age and the experience. Okay, thank you. Great. Uh, hello, Vishpala. So very interesting concept. Uh, first, I would like to say that Equipec has a very interesting logo. So kudos to the digital team who has worked on the logo. Um, since I'm in the e-commerce space, I would like to ask questions from my industry. So what I understand is that um, you are trying to preserve an age-old craftsmanship of your country. So one of the things where we face a bottleneck in e-commerce is when it comes to displaying the catalogs, the pictures, and maintaining the consistency. Since you are collecting products from all across the rural parts of India, I understand it might be difficult to get a proper quality of image. So my first question would be, how do you actually maintain that quality throughout your catalog within the online uh, platform that you have? And my second question is, you mentioned, quickly mentioned NFT. So could you shed some light on it? Because it's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to go from the second question to the first. So, in fact, Akiveki is the first organization uh, to launch craft-based NFTs in the world. Uh, it happened two years back. Uh, so, this was, uh, uh, you know, uh, what I uh, believe firmly is uh, crafts die because they are not changing with time. So, now if we want to reach out to the younger generation, if younger generation wants uh, NFT, why can't we convert the crafts into NFTs, which... Uh, uh, can reach to a wider audience. So that was the basic concept. Nobody else was willing to do it. Artisans don't have the capabilities and capacity to 
create their own NFTs and put it on the platform. Uh, I was uh, lucky enough to connect with uh, Wazirx that time and they helped us in uh, this whole project. It was done as a charity project for Creative Dignity, which uh, I'm another co-founder of another organization, which is which is a uh, network of all the craft organizations within the country. Uh, so that is how the NFTs happen. The artisans were told what, what NFTs are. They didn't understand it much. They said, Madam, you're talking about it, we will do it. We don't understand it yet. This artwork, this money, what do you want to do? So that is how it worked. Uh, it is too early for crafts to, uh, for the artisans to bring into NFTs, but we need a platform which can, uh, you know, become the bridge. So uh, that is what we did. Uh, the second part about NF uh, about the e-commerce platforms, yes, it is that is the toughest part, and that is why it took us four years of training to uh, you know start selling online. Uh, so uh, earlier, if uh, we would send them a design, a four-inch round in green color, we would get a six-inch round in purple color, and they would say, "Madam, jada de diya, paisa utna hi lagayenge." So from there, now, if we send them, they on their, recently we delivered an order for 600 pieces. One piece was damaged. Uh, it was not a reject for quality, but it got damaged in the transit. So not only have we managed to have the consistency in terms of designs, uh, finishing and uh, packaging, uh, we have also figured out these uh, uh, basic packaging, the outer packaging, everything where our products are reaching safe and sound to the final customers. So from 30 to 40% reject and damages, we have come to around 5% in on e-commerce e platforms. So that okay. is all uh, the catalogs and all. Our designers stay with the artisans in the villages uh, mm -hmm. and they have taught them how to click the pictures at the same time. Uh, many of uh, uh, like our design team only uh, does the cataloging for them and okay. they are or uh, just being very quick, um, since it's all decentralized, all the suppliers are decentralized. Do you have some sort of a management information system or inventory system? Yes. In a way, yeah, you do have that. We have it in a small village in Alibak, where the whole back end is managed by. This is something I'm super proud of. Three rural girls who are just graduates. They manage the whole back end inventory. Uh, packing, shipping, order uh, fulfillment, everything is managed by these three. Uh, these girls are 20, 22 year old, uh, fresh graduates from school uh, colleges around Alibak, and they are managing the whole uh, system for us. Fabulous work, Vish. I wish you all the best. Thank you. So the time is already up, uh, and we proceed to the next startup. Uh, thank you, Ishpala. Uh, now, I'd like to request uh, Agriotics Technologies to please uh, share your pitch. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, I'll quickly share my pitch. Yeah, is, is my screen visible to everyone? Uh, yes. Yeah, good morning everyone. This is Pratibha and I'm founder CEO for Agriotics Technologies. Uh, I'm a computer engineer by education. I do have 16 years of experience in IT. Uh, my, my product offering is into precision farming. Uh, I'm targeting the whole uh, horticulture crops. Uh, my product is into trial states at, at this point of time, and then uh, I, my achievements are have been selected for Agri Udan, which is an accelerated program uh, which runs across India, and we are just 10 startups which were selected. I have been also, uh, I, I am also selected for ISAP India, 
wherein 750 plus uh, applications were scrutinized and there are 10 to 15 women entrepreneurs that were selected. I'm also part of CIRCOT <clears throat> acceleration program and it is also top 15 uh, agri-based uh, um, startups that were selected. So yeah, this is about me, but then what's my story? So yeah, you can see uh, like nowadays we see so much content on OTG and there are heroes, but then my hero looks very gloomy. Uh, you can make out it's a hero of India who is a farmer, but he's very depressed. Why is, it, why is he depressed? What do you think? So yeah, he's depressed because there are no crops. You can see that the, the condition looks very harsh. So the problem that I'm trying to address here is a climate change that is affecting uh, affecting the farmer. So what stuck to me two, three years back, so my father is engineer by profession and he has a hobby of doing farming and still he was impacted. So what stuck to my mind, even being so educated, if we are hurt, so what happens to the normal <clears throat> farmer? So we know like, you know, 50% of ag land in India is under agriculture, but still it is affected. The GDP is not, you know, they are not able to contribute to the GDP. Why it is affecting? Because the farmers, they are not doing the farming first, they are doing it conventionally, and they are still not coming to the terms when it comes to the climate change, how climate change is affecting them. So in 50 years back we have 65 percent land which was under cultivation day by day because of excess use of fertilizers the land under cultivation within 50 years in india it is come down to 50 percent we know Last every day seconds. food yeah so because of this we are not able to you know contribute to the gdp so what we are coming to so we have developed a sensor-based hardware which will uh, collect all microclimatic data and that data will be sent to the farmers and they will be having advisories like how much, you know, what is the irrigation schedule, what is how much pesticides to be sprayed, what is, you know, fungicide. So that overall crop management can be done using the microclimatic data. Amazon. They will also have the, you know, different um, uh, advisories like uh, how how uh, it will affect in in your future. The total uh, market size is like some 15 100 crore and we are targeting uh, 22 crores. Uh, we have different uh, players like Fossil and Philo. So there are very few players in this market side. So I will not run through. So this is all technical. I know that we are just trying to uh, measure the social impact. So you can see but this is my actual installation. Though. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, so this is my team. It was very small time, but then yeah, this is my team. And uh, yeah, so just to close, so I think, uh, yeah, I just want to say, I wanted to show something. I think it is not part of the slide, but then, uh, yeah, I, I just want to say that I want to see that, you know, happy farmers. So that is the impact that I want to bring uh, after my product is implemented. I yeah. just have um, I have questions about what the sensor can actually detect, like what kind of nutrients are detected yeah. by the sensor. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So we have uh, some six to seven uh, sensors. So a few sensors are inside the soil. So mm -hmm. it will <coughs> detect the soil temperature, soil humidity. We also have certain sensors which will detect wind direction and uh, wind uh, you know direction wind speed and then some leaf wetness sensors then we have some sensors which will detect the canopy i mean at upper level what is the temperature and the humidity relative humidity basically uh, do so you this have is, uh, do you have detection metrics for say carbon phosphorus potassium nitrogen those kind of uh, those um, elements no so it's like uh, okay it is not directly but i'll tell you indirectly for example uh, now if the temperature is say 20 degree today and it's raining so my leaf is wet for five uh, you know five days so typically there will be some infection now what these guys do they do 
they start putting that fungicides and pesticides after the infection is done, right? But we are advising them that beforehand that this pest will come. So, you know, we are actually advising them in time. So we are actually making less use of fertilizers. So CO2 is something that is, you know, we are not able to yet relate it because see, it's a costly thing. So that CO2 sensors is like 10K and we had that in our prototype, but we are not able to convince to the farmer how it is useful. So we are just trying to use sensors which are directly impactful to them. And, but then yes, it it is having that impact, but indirect impact. And how many sensors would you need to deploy say on one acre of land? Okay, so, uh, so if the land type is same, if the crop type is same, uh, the relative humidity typically changes after 500 meters, but we are okay if the land type, uh, the crop, uh, suppose if it is a grape and the breed of the grape is same throughout, say, one acre of land, we can we are okay with one acre of land. The same, okay. The same, same. But if there is a slopey land, <coughs> if the breed <coughs> different, I'm sorry, I have a bad throat, then oh. they will have to go for, uh, you know, two, two units. Okay. Why I was asking you for carbon is... Uh, carbon farming is something which is coming up and running, you know, for climate yeah. change related uh, sensors. And uh, the previous entity that I was working with, uh, we were trying to identify uh, basically carbon in the soil, which is also done by soil health cards, the yeah. government soil health cards, which are not not very accurate to be precise. Um, so that's why I was asking you if you can identify carbon, because then you can register for certain uh, carbon farming projects as well. Yeah. Something yeah, I mean, we, we did it. I mean, initially when I started, I had all fleet of 15 sensors, like, you know, photo sensors. And, but then uh, someone was taking, like, uh, talking like, so idea and actually, you know, selling it. So I right. do, you know, I had that, you know, fantasy that I had fleet of sensors. But then when it comes to selling, because see, you saw my hero, he, he yes. is not, you know, that rich who can afford all of this Correct. so i have to stick to that but point noted i'll, I'll definitely try to you we know. can actually uh you know have a discussion bilaterally on this because this is a space that i've worked in extensively yes yes i i would like to have your you know contact details i'll i'll certainly connect to you rama definitely definitely yeah, yeah. all right um hello uh Hi. 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 so uh very interesting uh, i would just like to walk on what drama just mentioned uh, about the device itself so how much does it cost for one hero to buy an hardware from you okay so there are two models <clears throat> if it is simply irrigation model so we will uh, charge them 25k and if it is the full-fledged model uh, it will be some 45k now my competitors they're selling um so if I take names, so Philo is selling it for 57 to 58 case and their AMC is some 2 to 5 K. Uh, in first year, I, I do not charge them for AMC. I do have an AMC, uh, but it's a free AMC because, uh, you know, sometimes if sensors are not functioning, I'll replace them. Wherein other competitor, they are charging 67 K. So I'm actually, so uh, I, I just started pitching three, four months back because all these three years, I was actually trying to come up with in-house uh, design. So that's why I'm able to keep the cost low because I want to offer to my hero at at, at affordable price right. Since without, without uh, compromising the quality. Yeah. All right, so thank you. Uh, I'll just try to keep it short. Just trying to get a perspective. So do you have plans to offer EMIs? to all those farmers because maybe paying up a front 50 to 60k would be very troublesome for them uh, okay i will give you very very you know i don't know but then uh, see farmers they typically do not earn on a monthly basis and uh, I, I do not want to run a you know production assembly line so my my aim is after three years i will have some data of farmers and then i want to run an analytics based thing which will help them so if i go into this i you know might uh, exhaust myself in that collection of business so i'm very precise that i do not want to run behind you know i do not want to run pillar and post for the money so at this point of time till the time i get settled no it will be one okay, time so it's a no yeah. I understand. Yeah. And could you give us some metrics based on your operations, like how much efficiency 
you have been able to deliver to the farmers like you combat pests right so if there's an efficiency like 20 percent growth uh, that has been uh, nurtured through your product could you give us some numbers? yeah so uh, okay uh, so we are still in trial phase so we had deployed say five to seven kits and what we have observed that at least you know 25 percent uh, of water was saved then there was like they for example in terms of money i'll tell so we are targeting grave farmers so they themselves told us like you know they're able to so they say you know they spent so much on the sprays for grape it being a very intensive care uh, crop so they have saved so in one farmer they are able to save close to 45 so they said that we are uh, able to afford your kit because they were say able to save uh those number of uh, sprays and the amount of uh, spend on the crop so it's like in the first year they were able to actually you know make same savings and it is only from the uh, pesticides and the sprays and the nutrition management they are saying they cannot confirm now so because the first year so the the grape crop it is due in in march so you know once they actually see if it is an export quality yield they they said that they'll be able to comment if the nutrition management schedule schedule have helped them but i think we we already have the tick mark done on first two all right yeah i, I get it and last last question um yeah do you have any plans in mind to explore into new verticals since you are already in touch with the farmers do you have plans to go from farm to fork the direct con consumers by cutting down the middleman? Do you have any plans in the near future? Consumer as in you're saying farmers or data usage? The actual consumers who buys from the retail market, do you have plans to cut down on the middleman and just get involved in the supply chain so that you can just directly buy from the farmers? and sell to the consumers do you have plans in the future uh, no so my my uh, my uh, um, my my focus is on farmers and what is happening in the farm what is affecting because of climate change so yeah uh, i want to so now my money will be from hardware down the line five years i want to collect that data so that with the data and the hardware i want to help them so i do not think i might tie up if if i get that suggestion that they are having some troubles in supply chain i might do it but i do not want to do it on my own if i get some some holding and it's okay but then yeah my my focus and is clear yeah. thanks pradeepa it's better not to be distracted because yes. even yes. in bangladesh 80 percent of land much like india <coughs> is uh, agro-based and there are companies like Koshul like uh, as I mentioned partial in India, there's a mm -hmm. uh, startup called Partial and I page I farmers who are trying to cut down the middleman and bring down the cost for the actual customers and bring more profit to the farmers. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to shed light on this matter. Thank you so much for answering. Thank no you. Problem. So thank you, Shamdani, sir. But before we proceed, uh, do Amis, Amitabh, sir, and uh, Ali, sir, have any questions? I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, Shamdani and uh, Rupa covered really well, Rama covered really well. Yes. Okay, okay. Rahul, then we shall proceed. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Pradeepaji. Thank you. Yeah, good day. Yeah, I'll just go on mute. Yeah, uh, so thank you so much. Uh, now we have uh, Rosgar Dhaba. So we know the, can you please uh, share the page? Yes. yes. Can you see my screen? Uh, you actually, no. Yeah, now it's now it's here. So, uh, namaskar to everyone. Uh, my name is Vinod, and I'm a founder of Rose Guard Hub, basically a community information hub. So, what do we basically? So, I come from a small village in Bihar. Uh, from where people migrate to different uh, states like Punjab, 
Karnataka, Maharashtra, Gujarat, in search of job or in search of livelihood. Uh, not only from Bihar, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, people migrate to these uh, well-developed states. Here are some of the figures you can see. Latest figure are much more than that or realistic figures are much more than that. What happened once they go there, uh, most of them are like, they get the uninformed, uh, they have no information about what kind of job they are going to do. They have no information that what kind of livelihood they will get. And they suffer a lot. They primarily stay in uh, slums, slums mein rehte hai, aur, uh, I come from a family from where uh, people have migrated and one of my own cousin brother in such kind of a migration has lost his life. And there is a need to work on this unsafe migration and logo ko jo hai locally kaam mile. So I thought why not to provide information to the people unke apne gaon mein hi on local livelihood opportunities. So we come out with an idea that there will be a tea stall jo gaon mein chai ki dukaan hoti hai jahan pe uncalled gathering hoti hai log bina bulaye aate hai. So if we could display the information on local livelihood opportunities and if we could collect the information about those who all are job seekers and then we can match it family this will help. Also we realize that there's another set of livelihood opportunities in the form of government schemes. Sarkari schemes hoti hai, but wo logo tak pahunch nahi paati hai. For example, agar aapne old age pension banai hai, 500 rupay mil raha hai, uske milne ke do hi tarik hai. There are only two ways. Either you go online or, or you go offline. Now imagine ek budhi aurat hai gaon mein. How she will apply for online or offline? Na? So it means that there is a poor implementation. Uske baare mein sarkar ne socha hi nahi. So what we thought that why not from Rose Guard Hava we could assist this kind of community members in summation of application for all these welfare schemes. And these are the two major things which we do. We provide information and assistance on local livelihood opportunities. Last 30 seconds. And also on the government welfare schemes. This is uh, like most of these things are free. We also sell at the tea stall. We also sell the tea. Oscar chota sa jo hai. Logo, Pesa pay karna parte, annual membership fee, hum charge karte hai, das rupee ki, and something to printouts vagara lagte, we charge for that. Rest, all the things are free. These are the services primarily hum lete, provide karte hai, job ho gai, government welfare schemes ka ho gaya, and these are the equipments and assets which are at the Rose Garden. This is something which we are looking. Uh, Abhi Filhal, we are working with 10 Rose Guard Haba. We wanted to reach uh, like a scale to 100 Rose Guard Haba, primarily in the Bemaru states and also in the other states. Thanks. You can ask a question. Thank you very much. I think, again, very clear and uh, you know, simple pitch. I love that. Um, I just have you know question. Okay, this seems like a very community-led thing, right? Jitne achhe community ke log honge, utna achha rozgar dhaba, you'll actually have an impact on the surrounding. Uh, how do you think it can really scale up to like 100 dhabas, okay, you know, who are actually giving out benefit and is also self-sustainable as well? Uh, because I think kin, ho sakta hai sare, um, might not all of them uh, might get to that area where they self-sufficient and actually, actually is making money to you know run its own uh, business as well. So how do you see that and how do you hope to challenge that? Uh, thanks, Ali. So Ali, uh, one rose guard hava caters to about 5,000 people. And uh, costing of rose guard, one rose guard hava setting up is about three to five lakh rupees. It depends on the kind of asset you use it. 10 rupees is the membership per fee which you actually charge it. So in a way, it's from the day one, it's an operational, uh, like a self-sustainable kind of a model. We take a, a fund from our donors just for a, like initial one-time investment. And once we start it, from the day one, actually this is the model which works because in, especially in the rural India, uh, for example, if you want like any kind of a government document, uh, people search, uh, 
योजना का लाभ मिल जाए कुछ मिल जाए there is a some kind of craziness not only in the rural india even in the urban india if i want to make my own income tax card or pan card i will look somebody jo mera wo kaam kar de so har din hamari jo on an average jo waha pe log jate hain ek rozgar dhaka it's about 70 to like 80 people ek average mein bata raha hu kai bar aisa bhi hota hai ki 3 300 400 400 log hote hain during the covid time at one rozgar dhaka center like hamare yahan kilometers tak line lagi rehti hai लोग वहां पे जाके जो है अपने डॉक्यूमेंट्स बनवा रहे पीपल आर लाइक अप्लाइंग फॉर द डिफरेंट गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स वो सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग हमें करना पड़ता था सो देर इज अ नीड एक्चुअली लॉट ऑफ नीड एंड स्पेशली आफ्टर कोविड जो लोग रिटर्न होके आए ना यू माइट हैव सीन इन टेलीविजन न्यूज पेपर एवरीवेयर इन मीडिया जो रिटर्न माइग्रेंट्स की जो पिक्चर थी ना वो अभी तक लोगों के दिमाग से गई नहीं है तो थाउजेंड किलोमीटर जो वॉक करके आए हैं पीपल आर लुकिंग फॉर की हमें यहाँ पे अगर कुछ काम मिल जाए हमें वो अनसेफ माइग्रेशन नहीं करना पड़े करना पड़े सो दैट्स द वन थिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्केलिंग इसका एक हमारा एक सेटअप मॉडल है ठीक है हम इसको उठा के एक पंचायत से दूसरी पंचायत दूसरी पंचायत से तीसरी पंचायत तीसरी पंचायत से चौथी पंचायत जस्ट एज ए सेट की इसकी कॉस्टिंग बहुत कम है तीन से पांच लाख रुपए पड़ती है एक बार में उसके बाद कोई कॉस्टिंग नहीं सेल्फ सस्टेनेबल मॉडल तो आप इसको कहीं भी किसी भी पंचायत में किसी भी रिमोट एरिया में स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं बट हम इसको फ्यूचर में वी आल्सो वांट टू स्केल इट फ्रॉम मोर देन हंड्रेड रोजगार ढाबा सो वी आर वर्किंग ऑन अ टेक्नोलॉजी प्लेटफॉर्म जहां पे कि जो ऑफलाइन मूव्स होंगे वो एक एज अ कॉल सेंटर या सर्विस सेंटर के रूप में काम करेंगे एंड पीपल दोज हु हैव एक्सेस टू लाइक स्मार्टफोन्स एंड ऑल दे कुड यूज द रोजगार ढाबा मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन एक्सेस टू द गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स एंड द लोकल जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू यूजिंग दैट सो दीज आर द टू थिंग्स व्हिच वी आर लुकिंग फॉर स्केलिंग I have two things to add. Um, one question, one just a general wonderment. Have you heard about Hug Darshak? Yes, Rama Ji, we have heard about Hug Darshak. Uh, because they are doing something very similar and uh, also very extensively. They are now they are also raising, uh, you know, for the for a very similar purpose. So, how is your model different than uh, Hug Darshak's model? That's I know that you are using T stall as a you know point of contact, but apart from that. How would it be different? The uh, Rama Ji, one thing is that we are primarily working in the rural pockets. In rural pocket, what is important is, uh, we like as as I mentioned to Ali is about that we might we are working on a technology platform. But what happens in rural context? Ah, uh, agar if you are looking for a job or if you are looking for applying for a government scheme, uh, it's all about the trust factor. And trust factor aata hai jab aap na samne wale se milte ho. जब तक आप सामने वाले से नहीं मिलते हो आप अपने डॉक्यूमेंट सबमिट करते हो वहां पे वो ट्रस्ट फैक्टर आता नहीं है सो वी हैव दिस ऑल फिजिकल स्पेसेस हमारी जो जो टीम होती है वो टीम वहीं की लोकल होती है जिसको हम पूरा गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स के बारे में ट्रेन करते हैं वहां के डिफरेंट डिपार्टमेंट से मिलाते हैं वो एक ट्रस्ट डेवलप होता है तो एक फिजिकल स्पेस है जहाँ पे कि आप कल को अगर आपने कोई डॉक्यूमेंट सबमिट किया है और आपको लगता है कि नहीं मेरे को शायद वो वापस लेना है मेरे को जाके पूछना है यू कैन गो देयर एंड यू कैन आस्क क्योंकि मैं नहीं कह रहा हूँ कि हक दर्शक का जो मॉडल है वो आ, आ, शायद बेहतर नहीं है वो भी बेहतर है पर शायद वो उस जगह पे काम ज्यादा करे जहाँ पे कि टेक्नोलॉजी या स्मार्टफोन वाले लोग ज्यादा हैं अभी हम जिन इलाकों में काम कर रहे हैं वहां पर स्मार्टफोन या आ, इस तरह की एक्सेसबिलिटी की बहुत कमी है और जिनके पास है वो प्राइमरली एंटरटेनमेंट के लिए इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं वो किसी वेलफेयर स्कीम्स को अप्लाई करने के लिए इस्तेमाल नहीं करते ओके एंड वन मोर क्वेश्चन आई हैड इज डू यू हैव अ स्टैटिस्टिक ऑन अभी तक आपने जो काम किया है उसके बेसिस पे हाउ पीपल हैव बेनिफिटेड लाइक से यू नो दीस मेनी पीपल अप्लाइड फॉर दो दीस मेनी स्कीम्स दैट काइंड ऑफ अ स्टैटिस्टिक पूरा एमआईएस क्रिएट किया हुआ है बेस्ड ऑन डिफरेंट गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स को एक एक्सेल शीट में हम लोग अपना एमआईएस करते हैं और हर सेंटर जो है हर दिन के एंड होने पे वो भरता है तो लाइवलीहुड स्कीम्स अलग है सोशल सिक्योरिटी स्कीम्स अलग हैं लोकल जॉब्स अलग हैं और जॉब्स को हम लोग ट्रैक करते हैं एक दिन की जॉब से लेकर मतलब जो वेज लेबर वाली जॉब होती है उसको भी हम लोग इंक्लूड करते हैं उससे लेकर जो है एक साल तक की जॉब तो एज ऑफ नाउ हम लोग जो है लगभग बयासी हजार एटी टू थाउजेंड पीपल तक हमारी रीच हुई है फोर हंड्रेड सिक्सटी प्लस विलेजेस में हम लोग अपने काम को पहुँचा चुके हैं okay. so the time is up uh, do the other members of the jury have any questions yeah i have a question for vinod ji uh, so vinod ji wonderful work uh, much needed in the rural belt of india 
मेरे दो छोटे से प्रश्न हैं एक प्रश्न ये है कि आपने फॉर इतने विलेजेस का अभी अभी बात की कि इतने विलेजेस के तक हमारी रीच हुई है सो so, इसके फर्दर कोई और और डेटा है कि अभी कितने मतलब एनहेंसमेंट इन लाइवलीहुड कितने रुपीज से हुआ उनका या कितने उन्होंने रोजगार करना स्टार्ट किया या माइग्रेशन कितना रुका उसके हिसाब से क्योंकि आप आप चाह रहे हो कि वो वहीं पर कुछ ना कुछ करें वहाँ पे तो उस पर भी कुछ आपका स्टैट्स अपने निकालने की कोशिश की जो आपके मॉडल को और अच्छी तरह आपके इम्पैक्ट को और अच्छी तरह बताता है अब बेटा आप जी अपने इन मतलब लगभग 22 इंडिकेटर्स पे हमने अपने डेटा को निकाला हुआ है ये एक जो मैंने आपको बताया कि जनरल डेटा है कि हमारी इतनी रीच है एक 82,000 जो है टोटल हमारी रीच है 464 अप्रोक्स विलेजेस के साथ है इन टर्म्स ऑफ जो जॉब रहा है लोकल जॉब्स का वो हमारा थोड़ा कम रहा है आई विल से वो हमारी एक अप्रोक्सीमेट जो मेरे पास अभी नंबर है उसके हिसाब से अबाउट हम लोग बारह हजार छह सौ के आसपास जो है लोगों को जॉब दिला पाए हैं और ये जॉब दीज जॉब आल्सो इंक्लूड जो एक दिन की जॉब है और ये जॉब वो भी है जहाँ पे कि लोगों को एक साल तक के लिए जॉब मिली है तो ओके okay. हमारे पास अलग अलग इंडिकेटर्स है और उनको हमको बेसिकली एक एनालिसिस करना है एनालिसिस करके हम जो है वो डेटा कहीं पर भी शेयर कर सकते हैं कोई इशू नहीं है थैंक यू विनोद जी एक और क्वेश्चन छोटा सा था कि अब ये जब हंड्रेड ढाबाज की बात करते हैं तो क्या हाउ डू यू इंश्योर कि ऑल हंड्रेड ढाबाज है फॉलो द सेम स्टैंडर्डाइज प्रोसेस एज यू आर यूजिंग एक्चुअली बिकॉज एज यू स्केल अप एंड डिफरेंट पीपल आर वर्किंग ऑन दिस ढाबाज एज अ ओनर ऑफ रोजगार ढाबा हाउ डू यू टेक अप दैट दैट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन सी व्हाट हैपेंस लाइक we have set up a clear cut sops and what we do that after a year we hand it over to the community we don't own it we don't intervene it we just do a monitoring once in a quarter and then we form a committee and then committee appoint like generally those people who are running it they appoint those people to run it so it's owned by the community what we do is that we set up this entire sop ki yahan pe ye cheeze honi chahiye these are the charges it's not like ki If there is a ten rupees membership fee tomorrow, you start charging hundred rupees membership. So, a proper jo hai, we have a unke saath a committee, jo committee banti hai community ki. We do an agreement, and then we hand it over to the community. We move on to the other village or to the other panchayat. So, this is how we look into ki a same operations ke saath jo hai, wo kam kare. So, wo SOPs helps us. और वो एक साल तक हमारे साथ काम किए होते हैं तो उनको पता होता है कि क्या चीजें होनी चाहिए कैसे डेटा को ट्रैक करना है क्या क्या सर्विसेज है और जैसे ही कोई नई स्कीम आती है उसके बारे में उनको अपडेट करते रहते कि ये स्कीम आ गई है एंड देन वी आल्सो कंडक्ट ट्रेनिंग प्रॉपर ट्रेनिंग जो है उनको कंडक्ट करते हैं सो दैट्स हाउ वी एक्चुअली ऑपरेट ओके थैंक यू विनोद जी Well established the point of contact. I understand that you have tapped into the right market. So what I understand is that there is this job seeker and this job provider, right? And since you are tapped into the rural areas, I understand that in different segments of job, it might be the blue collars that you are trying to address to. And we have seen some incredible success stories from Dabbawala and how they have operated with efficiency. so uh, could you give us uh, an example like how do you keep the supply and demand in balance like are you partnering up with job providers and how do you do that just give an idea thank you so uh, one thing is that our focus is primarily to give local job opportunities we do not want that people have a unsafe migration in terms of like collaborations for example there are few companies from bangalore they have approached us and they said that you sell us means you send uh, candidates for uh, the delivery kind of a job and all we haven't get into that kind of still we are looking into those mous and those proposals we haven't started that we are still looking into the local jobs just to inform all of you also here and using this platform that there is always a ho halla about that there is a no job no livelihood opportunities in villages and all but if you look into it, there are a lot of job opportunities even in the rural uh, context what is missing is that people are not informed about it because there is no source of information except the panchayats and uh, those who are who have been to the rural pockets they know that how panchayats work 
So we try our best that we stick to the local livelihood or opportunities until and unless of major companies like Infosys or TCS or something else wants and provide a like a long and safe jobs. We will uh, ensure that the look we will share the information about the local livelihood opportunities rather than going to the uh, job opportunities from Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Vinodji. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Vinodji, for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, now, I would like to uh, request a charge card to please uh, present your uh, pitch. Yeah, thank you. Give me a minute. Okay. Is it visible? Is my screen uh, visible to all of you? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, I am Arun uh, representing ChargeCard. We make charging simple and easy. And our charging is completely powered by Renewable Energy. And if you look at uh, how we, how a person can set up a charge point business or charge point operation business, come into uh, come into the operations and coming uh, like coming into the establishment of a charging point, you need a lot of permissions need to be taken care of from DSCOMs or from uh, even from government authorities from the public spaces that you want to operate in. And we are I am talking only at the point of green charging as of now, which is a completely like coming into the new point of charging or focusing on new idea of charging. So I'm introducing a new product, which is charge card D7, which is completely a new new product, which is as simple as like which which can act as an uh, swiggy for electric vehicles. So it is an autonomous, autonomous mobile charging robot made to deliver charging at your public and parking parking spaces. Uh, and the app advises you to how to charge, how to use this application while you are charging. So this is a robot of which way in which we mount the batteries on. So my batteries along with the charging station that comes to you to give the charge. Uh, a single robot can charge four vehicles in a day, which is a completely a fast DC charging for a, uh, for four wheelers only. We are only targeting at a four wheelers market. So the problem which came out from the person who is already operating this charge point business which who is the head of operations in bangalore uh for, a, for one of the company uh he or like he faces a different difficult issues in terms of power cuts uh why while even while using the charging the charging the charging stations if you are if there is a high demand you are the transformers might fail because of the demand so and uh, meet another person who is based out of Hyderabad who wants to come into the charging business, but because of the hectics or because of the problems which are there in getting the permissions, uh, operational difficulties and initial capital, uh, he is also set back. So we are fake, fair, fair, yeah, we are the, bridging the gap of uh, the kind of operations or uh, barriers in operations as well as the barriers in uh, op opening a CPO business. So it is no surprise we you have a large gap between the fast chargers in the market. If you look at the sales of uh, the electric vehicles, there are around 13 lakh electric vehicles which are already running in the market. There are only 1.5 lakh electric charging stations which are combined, combined uh, like CCS and GPT, which is- Last 30 seconds. Okay, it is projected we have, we'll be having more than uh, uh, 5 crore EVs will buy 2030. So if we have a comparison between what charge card is doing and what other other uh, CPOs are doing, you would, we don't need any uh, permissions from Discom and we don't need any dedicated space. Uh, it, we don't need, we don't have any, uh, like we have a low operational cost when we compare to others and we have a convenience of charging. You can park anywhere in your space that the robot will be coming to you to give the charge. And we only use the clean, clean energy know. to power up. And this is our projections and our expenditures. Yeah, we'd like to hear more about like your feedback and your, any questions from you, sir. So thanks, Arun. Uh, my question uh, is, uh, so what I'm, I'm visualizing is that this is a kind of a vehicle which will be a mobile van kind of thing which is moving around and as in when uh, somebody wants to get it, the, the cars charge something, they can call you and at a service, they you go there, charge the batteries and go off. 
So I, I, want to, I want to give you a clarity on that. There are already roadside assistance vehicles or some players are already operating in terms of roadside assistance. Uh, they will give you when, wherever you like you are stuck in the stuck in the market or stuck, 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 stuck down the road. But a charge card is completely different. We are only focusing at the public parking spaces, public and private spaces, or only in the parking spaces where you don't need to have a fixed charging station. If you look at uh, the conventional market today, you uh, if if you are if you go for a public space or a private space, uh, you you see a charging station, but it is completely fixed, and someone is already occupied. You don't have the uh, information when it's going to like vacate the space or when you have to uh, like keep your vehicle there. So instead of that, you uh, you always worry about charging or the, to remove the range anxiety out of your mind. Just you can park anywhere in the space. You, you if you go to a mall, you can park anywhere there. The charge you you order it through your uh, uh, application. The robot will come to you, and you just have to plug in. And your every information, every telematics from the battery, every telematics that is going. You, it, everything is in your hand. You can also stop it. You can you can actually take a decision from your application itself. You don't have to worry about what's happening at the vehicle. Is it a fast charging as compared to the traditional mounted charging uh, stations? Yes. Or? yes, yes. Uh, if you look at the charging stations as of now, you we do have a major share of GBT uh, and the CCS. So initially, all the fleet operators and even all the manufacturers went for a GBT. Uh, now everyone is transforming. Everyone is converting to CCS itself. So we want to operate in the uh, uh, in the lines of the market. We are only going with CCS for now. Okay. And one last question. Uh, sorry, I just want to ask this one last int question. Intrigue questions. Ki, uh, as I heard that as in, as in when uh, more EV vehicles are coming into the uh, on the roads. So government is also trying to lay a big infrastructure on, on highways and everywhere to uh, uh, more and more station charging stations, actually, societies yes. and everything. So how will you, will not that those will be your, your uh, hardcore competitors? No, no, that comes no. what up? I feel is if you, if you are looking, if we are looking at, uh, I will tell you an example where uh, government is neglecting some major important stress points or a pain point that we are going to face in the future. Uh, if, the, even government or the public, or even the private players who are establishing these network of CPOs and net, network of charge point, charge point, they are always connected with the grid. So the current uh, uh, power generation demands are not meeting the requirements of the people. We do face the power cut, but the major, uh, the demand for EVs are also coming into the market. So on an average, our monthly consumption would be around 40 kilowatts, 40 kilowatt hours of energy per month for an household. But if you are getting an EV, you are using it using the 40 kilowatts of energy in a single day. So if you are using it in 15 days, you are uh, multiplying your energy demand to 400 percent. So we need more uh, energy required to uh, like power these EVs. We need more uh, energy. Uh, like we are indirectly stressing power plants as well. We are again uh, emitting more carbon into the environment using power plants. We are direct. We are reducing the direct emissions from the vehicles, but indirectly increasing the demand on the power plants and increasing the uh, more uh, carbon footprint from the like we do have indirect emissions from electric vehicles but charge card is also focused on reducing the carbon footprint in terms of uh indirect emissions as well we are only powered with clean energy we are getting the mobilization of this energy through renewable energy sure sure thanks thanks Arun. thank you uh, hi Arun. Uh, hello very interesting uh concept you are actually trying to come up with solutions of the future so mm -hmm. let me just dive right into it so as we know that tesla has elon musk has a different business called solar city where, from where he extracts all the energy for his uh, solar ev uh, generating vehicles so what wh what is your supply of extracting those energies uh, so uh, you you i think you are asking of how how you are meeting the demand or how you are uh, uh, operation operating or how you are uh, delivering the de uh, required energy to these vehicles right okay uh, so our plan is to uh, so we do generally have a, each robot has a capacity of a 120 kilowatt hour so public spaces are more than 10000 square feet of in, uh, space which is already available in the uh, open tops or the rooftops of these buildings so mm -hmm. We can have a uh, we can have an MOU with directly with these swap spaces we, we where we can go directly getting this energy from the, like producing energy at the top of it or else we can directly get the uh, store the energy at the point of uh, like 
store the energy at the point of production itself then where the, you you spoke about the teslas where they are like where they are generating energy at a point and uh, distributing it back to other place so the similar model is also happening in india but where the government and the private production units are uh, producing and directly uh, putting onto the grid but you are pulling it somewhere else so there is a grid imbalance happening so to reduce or uh, to reduce all these technical difficulties in terms of distribution of energy and operational operations in terms of distribution of energy uh, a decentralized power production units is a best solution for tackling all these issues of uh, operations or distribution oh, fantastic uh, thanks arun uh, last question would be uh, what would be the ballpark figure of setting up one of those infrastructures in any uh, place given so place? If, if we compare it with the uh, uh, like expenses of capex and operational expenses of uh, conventional and the charge card uh, so for uh, conventional charging station it comes around 40 lakh so you need transformer connections you need a space requirement you need energy uh, like uh, energy uh, discount permissions as well so even after that you need to purchase charging stations for your own you need you're like the charging station cost itself uh, 50 percent of the expense so charge card is providing only at uh, around uh, 25 uh, 25 lakhs so you are uh, reducing the cost of 15 lakhs and even uh, you don't have to uh, mobilize even it gives a convenience for the user to park it anywhere because you can have a more number more demand you can also give more supply you will have more revenues out of this okay and from a customer's point of view do they pay you on a monthly subscription basis or pay as you go so initially we are only talk uh, we are only focusing on a paper uh, kilowatt model the energy that you take we are only going to charge them all as such all right and what's the average consumption of one user per day so it, 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 it comes around it comes around it, it depends again on the uh, uh, capacity requirements of the vehicle right. so some some vehicles have around 40 kilowatt or batteries and some some are around 20 kilowatt hours battery mm -hmm. so if you look at we we only wants to give it again in come we, like we have to talk again into technical things more of more into like mm -hmm. if, if we have a battery like if we looking if we are charging a battery initial charge like consider 0 to 10 percent takes higher time and uh, 80 to 100 takes higher time in between the battery gets charged fast so we are looking at giving a fast charge not only in terms of that look we are only we are also focusing on a technology where we can deliver this charge with without affecting the battery so if we are trying to uh, ch yeah, give charge continuously for a battery like if we, if we consider a mobile uh, we do have a battery option like we can have the data of the charges number of charges that are happening the life cycle if you if you look at an uh, mac uh, like even if you look at an iphone you have an option of uh, a battery health all, already displayed but you don't have that option in android so similarly we are trying to build a technology that can take uh, that can charge the electric vehicle without affecting the life we want to increase the life of the battery so which we call it and call it as an intelligent adaptive charging we are working on to uh, working on mobilizing uh, things on developing the uh, the technology for cha charging all right one last question would be from a customer's point of view who's using an ev uh, in terms of mileage how much uh, cost are you trying to cut down compared to the traditional fossil fuel all the diesel options that we buy on a regular basis for a regular cars so you uh, in, in the in the customer point of view if you are looking at the same energy that you are taking from the grid costs around like uh, around 18 to 20 rupees per kilowatt so by using the renewable energy our production cost is uh, pretty low we can we can offer it around 12 to uh, 13 rupees per kilowatt itself so it is a, pr a price difference as well even if you look at uh, if you have adding it completely you can save around 3 to 400 per charge per single vehicle Fantastic. Thank you, Arun. Appreciate Thank you. It. So, any more questions from the jury? No, well, I think, uh, you know, Shamdani, Amitabh covered uh, it very extensively. Okay, so Rahul, please take over. Yeah, sure. So, thank you, Arun. So, thank we you, are having our last pitch for the today's event. So I would like to request uh, millets, uh, millet street health, uh, health foods. Uh, I think 
Vidya is here. Yeah. So Vidya, ah. please uh, share your page. Yes, sir. Namaskar. My name is Vidya Zushi. Hai. Uh, founder of Nutrimillets from Aurangabad. Uh, I have heard all of the ideas and all of the ideas were very good. And all of you have a lot of good things from me. Now, I will tell you about it. I have made a product of Nutrimillets. Next, next. Yes, sir. 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 और बच्चे भी हैं वो हेल्थ फूड खाना पसंद करते हैं और जन हम सोचते नहीं हैं हेल्दी और हेल्दी खाने के बारे में हम सोचते नहीं हैं फिर मैंने सोचा कि किसान की बेटी हूँ मुझे कुछ खाने में ही बनाना था फिर मेरी ये मेरी टीम है इनके साथ मैंने डिस्कस किया कि मैं क्या बना सकती हूँ जो टेस्टी भी हो और हेल्दी भी हो इनके साथ डिस्कस करने के बाद इन्होंने मुझे सजेस्ट किया कि मैं मिलेट्स पे काम कर सकती हूँ और मैंने मिलेट्स पे काम करना शुरू कर दिया और मैंने मिलेट्स से प्रोडक्ट बनानी शुरू कर दी मेरी कुछ सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है कि मैंने मेरे प्रोडक्ट्स में मेरे जो बिजनेस में है सब महिलाओं को ही काम का मैंने सोचा है और जो मिलेट थाली के बाहर किया है उसको हमें थाली में लाना है और जिनको मिलेट्स की जरूरत है उनको कम से कम दाम में मिलेट्स मिलना चाहिए ये मेरी सोच है ये कुछ मेरे प्रोडक्ट्स है जनरली मिलेट्स से ज्वार की रोटी बाजरे की रोटी और पापड़ ही बनाए जाते हैं तो मैंने इससे कुछ हटके बनाना सोचा था जैसे कि इडली है दही वड़ा है कुछ नमकीन है कुकीज है लड्डू है मिलेट्स में सभी गुण है फाइबर है प्रोटीन है कैल्शियम है इसीलिए मिलेट्स को सुपर फूड कहा जाता है और मेरे पूरे प्रोडक्ट्स जो है वो ग्लूटेन फ्री है इजी टू कुक है और पॉकेट फ्रेंडली भी है ये मेरी कुछ प्रोडक्ट लिस्ट है जिसमें कुकीज है चूड़ा है जो फ्लेक्स का है ज्वार फ्लेक्स का है लड्डू है कुछ आटे बनाए मैंने जैसे कि इडली का है थालपीट आटा है अपे का आटा है दही वड़ा आटा है ये मेरे कुछ कस्टमर्स है अलग फील्ड से है इनका ये फीडबैक है और इन्होंने मेरे प्रोडक्ट खाए हैं और सजेस्ट भी किए हैं और इनको बहुत पसंद भी आए ये कुछ मेरे अवार्ड है मुझे और मेरे प्रोडक्ट को मिले हैं और मुझे खुशी होती है अब हम प्राइवेट लिमिटेड हो रहे हैं हो गए हैं आप सवाल पूछ सकते हैं थैंक यू विद्या आई थिंक काफी आपकी भी प्रेजेंटेशन बहुत अच्छी थी और सिंपल थी मेरे पास एक तो कमेंट है वो ये कि आई थिंक आपका ये बहुत जरूरत है नॉट जस्ट इंडिया बट आई थिंक पूरे दुनिया को भी अब इसकी जरूरत पड़ेगी न्यूट्रिशन फूड खास तौर पे ग्लूटेन फ्री जो आपने खास तौर पे से मैंशन किया कहना नो कि अभी आप लोगों कहाँ पे सेल करते हैं सबसे ज्यादा आप लोगों की मार्केट कहाँ पे है और क्या आपका स्कोप है कि आप किस तरह इसको एक्सपैंड करेंगे और एक इसी के अंदर एक और चीज क्या आपका कोई ऑनलाइन स्टोर है कि नहीं है हम फिलहाल तो पूना में है औरंगाबाद में तो है पूना गोवा सेल करते हैं हम और ऑनलाइन में अभी तक तो कोई कहाँ पे भी नहीं है ऑनलाइन में अमेजोन हमें हेल्प कर रहा है अभी अमेजोन पे आ जाएंगे शायद थोड़े दिन में ठीक है जी थैंक यू
विद्या जी अमिताभ भी है बहुत मिलेट्स वाकई आपने सही बोला सुपर फूड्स ही है हमारी प्रीवियस जनरेशन यही खाती थी विद टाइम हम लोग कन्वर्ट हो गए वीट खाने के लिए मेरा एक एक इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन ये है कि मैंने विद इन महाराष्ट्र में सुना है थोड़े और भी ऐसे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो मिलेट्स की चिक्की और वो बना के बेच रहे हैं इनफैक्ट रूरल पुणे के अंदर कोई है जो रूरल चिक्की मैंने टेस्ट भी किया था वो तो वो मिलेट का बना हुआ है हार्ड कोर्स के ऊपर तो ये तो आपका और उनका जो है प्रोडक्ट्स में या कहना चाहिए ब्रांड में क्या डिफ्रेंसिएशन है कि लोग आपका ही क्यों खरीदे उसके ऊपर या क्यों खरीदना चाहिए आपका आप कुछ कहना चाहेंगे इसके बारे में आप हाँ सर जरूर कहूंगी मैंने देखा है मैंने पूना का भी देखा है वो लोग जो है उनका ग्लूटेन फ्री नहीं है उनके इसमें राइस भी रहता है कुछ ऐसे कंटेंट्स रहते हैं वो प्योर मिलेट से नहीं बना रहे है मेरे पूरे प्रोडक्ट जो है वो प्योर मिलेट्स मिलेट्स के ही है ग्लूटेन फ्री है राइस फ्री है शुगर फ्री है और कोई भी उसमें प्रिजर्वेटिव एडेड नहीं है तो ये मेरा प्लस पॉइंट है और मुझे कहते हुए बहुत खुशी होती है सर ये आखिर एरिया में यानी कि महाराष्ट्र के एरिया में अकेली मैं हूँ जो प्योर मिलेट्स पे काम करती तो इसीलिए मेरे प्रोडक्ट खरीदी करनी चाहिए सर जो और मेरी और टीम तो... और मेरी टीम बहुत अच्छी है सर और मेरी टीम में न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट है डॉक्टर है और इनके सजेशन से ही मैंने ये प्रोडक्ट बनाए हैं और मेरे पूरे प्रोडक्ट जो है सर्टिफाइड भी है और लैब टेस्टेड है ओके तो अभी तक अभी तक आपने कितने कितने रुपीस का सेल कर पाए हैं कितने प्रोडक्ट के कितने पैकेट बेचे हैं कुछ बताएंगे कुछ इसके बारे में अभी लॉकडाउन था उस टाइम तो हमारा सेल नहीं हुआ पिछले साल से अभी हमारा सेल बहुत अच्छा हुआ है अभी तक हमने सोलह लाख का सेल हुआ है हमारा रिस्पॉन्स अच्छा है मगर और मुझे सेल्स बढ़ाना है लोगों तक जाना है और कितने कस्टमर्स हैं आपके पास में अभी और कुछ ऐसे मालूम है कि उनमें से कितने लोगों ने दोबारा खरीदा एक बार खरीदने के बाद में मुझे आपसे पूछना था की ये जो आप मिलेट लेते हैं मतलब वो आपके खुद के फार्म के मिलेट है या आपके किसी फार्मर्स के साथ टाइप है कैसे मतलब आप जो रॉ मटेरियल है उसको कैसे प्रोक्योर करते हैं या कैसे लेके आते हैं अपने मंडी से मंडी से परचेस करती हूँ मैडम मैं मंडी से परचेस करती हूँ मंडी से हाँ। और अभी आपके टीम में कितने लोग हैं मेरे तो टीम में चार आ, मतलब न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट के अलावा मैं पूछ रही हूँ जो ये हाँ। जो बनाने में हेल्प करे आपको चार लोग चार चार लोग ओके ओके बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद विद्या जी और डू द जूरी मेंबर्स हैव एनी अदर डाउट्स और क्वेश्चंस आई थिंक आवर रिस्पेक्टेबल जूरी हैज एड्रेस्ड टू ऑल द कंसर्न्स सो आई एम हैप्पी थैंक यू ओके सर थैंक यू सो मच राहुल प्लीज टेक ओवर शोर अपुन थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच विद्या जी एंड आई विल आल्सो लाइक टू थैंक्स ऑल द जूरी मेंबर्स बिफोर गोइंग फॉरवर्ड like uh, this was our last uh, pitch uh, i request uh, juries uh, to please share their uh, views on today's uh, uh, this pitch event starting with uh, amitabh uh, amitabh vyas sir so please uh, share your sure, views sure. on the today's pitch event. so i think uh, i think wonderful pitches very very diverse sectors that diverse areas uh, uh, people are working uh, on i have a small request in the process per se ki rather than having 3 minutes uh, presentation i uh, give them more time to pitch the thing is ki and startups uh, if you doing a, a a fast pitch then 3 3 minutes is okay actually when you are looking at a social impact organization you trying to understand their model then you require a little more time maybe 5 7 minutes to to at least know at least complete their pitch or you need to give them a guidelines ki okay this thing to to be completed in precisely 3 minutes and this slides need, need to be according to that because everyone has a different pace of presenting so th- that will be that will be good actually 
and then i think sure, jury sure. will we'll, be able we'll to yeah, yeah thanks yeah, that's sure. only thank you, for thank you. wonderful effort this fit team uh after that uh, i request ali mohsud sir please um i totally agree with uh, amitab i think uh, uh, every startup here presented every business presented a wonderful idea and a very thoughtful social change and social cause behind it it was good to see uh, so many diverse areas uh, and different startups um i love how you know uh, all of these startups already have a, a, you know an impact already in making a customers jo ki already unke sath kaam kar rahe hain and uh, you know lastly i would like to say ke you know keep up this good work uh, this doesn't really define uh, you know all that's going to happen next uh, but really you know keep up the good work it's the genuineness of the social cause that's going to take you forward and how much hard work that you are going to put into it okay thank you very much guys sure. thank you thank you so much ali sir uh so uh shamdani sir i would like to request you to please uh, share your views um, thanks rahul um so first of all starting from social shapes foundation till millets all of the startups and all of the entrepreneurs are highly energetic and it was very difficult to mark each and every one of them like there's a very tiny thin line that differentiates each of them but as rightfully ali has mentioned like let this or any of those uh, events not judge your efforts your commitment towards your goal and the startup these are just you know some sort of an accomplishment just to keep you motivated but apart from that each of the startups has a customer base you are creating already creating an impact so i congratulate each and every one of you that you have succeeded and what you actually gave up on uh, to pursue your dreams and i wish you all the best and uh, wish you all the best for the future thank you sure thank you thank you so much sir uh ramam please uh, share your views uh, one thing i would like to first of all point out is it was a very good mix of women entrepreneurs and uh, you know that is a very rare thing to see in a lot of pitching sessions uh so kudos to the misfit team for you know maintaining a very healthy balance um apart from that i think what um, amitab sir said was quite i mean bang on you need to set a context for a social entrepreneur to you know uh, start pitching and you know talk about the, the story and i think it's also it doesn't do justice when somebody is so passionate and Uh, wants to tell the story you know of the entire entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurial journey so 3 minutes is a little less to cover that um so that i think is a very valid point apart from that i think there is a very good mix of uh, ideas like right from you know uh, very tech savvy interventions to absolutely non tech savvy interventions so there was a very good mix of that and um, again Uh, you know congratulations to everybody because i've already started making an impact uh, doesn't matter where you pitch what happens what doesn't happen you are all on the right track and very energetic all of you actually the entire um, entire pitching session i didn't see any energy dips in any of the startups so so congratulations on that as well and it was a very good saturday uh, well spent you know very inspiring uh thank you so much for uh, you know giving me this opportunity also miss fits and um, all the best to all the startups i am sure you all are going to do really well so thank you thank you thank you so much mama and uh, before going for, uh, forward for the vote of thanks um any uh, three reviews i would like to ask three reviews from the participants like uh, what was their experience for the two days speech event anyone can please uh, uh, please go for the reviews anybody yeah hi this is satan from chatkar so i want yeah. i just want to mention about the timing itself like because it it's a 3 minute schedule that restricted us to tell more 
uh, what we are not actually like what we actually are trying to do but we concised uh, our uh, pitch to a slide like little uh, like within a three minutes we felt that uh, like we can do we can actually make a more uh, like big presentation so big impact in terms of explaining you all things uh, if it is uh, given uh, at least a five to six minutes of time and uh, it was a great it was a great uh, to be a part of my speech. thank you very much Sure. Thank you so much, Arun. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, hi, Rahul. Uh, Prachi here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah please. Yes, Prachi. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to thank everybody. And, and I think my only uh, comment would be, um, so I, I realized that I might, uh, so as a younger, relatively younger organization in the group, I got to learn a lot. Uh, in terms of you know how to present ideas and what are the things to take care of so i think and and that's kind of what um, additional thing i was looking for at in a in a platform like this so uh, thanks to all the participants and and uh, and the jury for for their inputs and i think i took away a lot uh, from this from this event thank you Uh, sorry, you guys are on mute. I can't hear you. Break stream. Hello. Is I'm audible. Hello. Yes, you're audible now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, there was a uh, internet connection issue. So yeah, uh, thank you so much, Prachi. I think uh, we should uh, wind up with the vote of thanks. So I would like to request uh, Sneha Das to please present the vote of thanks. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So first, I would like to thank all the jury members for their valuable time. It was amazing having them on board and uh, with their questions and all. It was an amazing event with all the startups and all the pitch it, like pitch session. It was amazing. Uh, their initiatives were very amazing. It's like overwhelming sometimes, but yeah. Uh, so this is the end of all amazing pitches, truly commendable work by all startup here. Uh, you know, you truly make the great platform every year is like misfits. So yeah, thank you. And I would like to thank all the partners uh, of our like uh, Global Shipper Nagpur, our co-host, then Impact Pot, Unlimited India, Kokarma, Maxworth and Lemon Ideas. Thank you uh, for your guys support. To this Metsfits event and uh, yeah thank you so much this is like for my end thank you and yeah amazing Metsfits team of thank course so thank you so much thank you so much yeah thank you so uh Rahul, i think uh, we should uh... oh yes yeah uh yeah uh, before uh uh, before leaving the uh, meet, I would like to uh, tell you one thing: like uh, for the um, whatever the winners will be de declared, it will be declared in the next week. Once again, I'm uh, I want to just uh, talk about it. So in the next uh, next week, we are going to declare the winners on the so social media. So stay uh, stay tuned and uh, thank you once again from my side also. And uh, and sorry if uh, anything misconceptions ha uh, have been uh, covered from my side. So yeah, so thank you.